Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope y'all having a great week, and I appreciate y'all being here, man. I really do. We got a fucking awesome guest for y'all today. Somebody I've wanted on the podcast for a while. Before I introduce this guest, just want to go ahead and tell y'all that tickets for my upcoming tour, Daisy Dukes and Cowboy Boots, are out now. You can get those tickets at taboomusic.com. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. We're hitting fucking all over the country. Uh, it's an album tour, too, so be on the lookout for the announcement of that album coming really soon. Very proud of it. It's definitely my best work. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Usually it kind of is easy, but I fucking really challenge myself with this one. So very proud of it. And uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who's been supporting the new song with Enzo and Prob Cause. And thank you to everybody who's been getting tickets to the upcoming shows, man. I'm very much looking forward to getting on the road and giving you all the best time possible. But enough with all that, man. My guest this week is a fucking incredible producer, good person, and a good friend. Uh, somebody I've been friends with for a while. I've wanted to have him on the, wanted to have him on the podcast, um, but it just never worked out. But now we got to have it. He is a collective owner, label owner. It's like a label and collective, uh, Spicy Boys. He started that. Um, he is an incredible DJ curator, just all around great guy. And I was very lucky to sit down and talk with this guy today. I'm going to let it get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Miso. Cheers, buddy. Mine's already open. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got a little excited. <laughs> How you doing today, bud? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Um, a little tired, but overall good. What you been doing to make you so tired, dude? It's just Thursday. <laughs> what, you're not tired? No, nah, dude, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm ready to rock. Um, I don't know, I usually have trouble. Try bringing it just a little closer to you. You can bring it, you can bring it with you. With you. Yeah. I, I have trouble sleeping at times, but also it's just I'll I'll like try to sleep and then it's like I'll have a tune in my head mm. <laughs> and then it's just game over. Yeah. <laughs> That's Dude, usually I, how it goes. I'm the same way. Like I have I've had trouble sleeping like my whole life. Yeah. I in a weird way, like in the last couple of weeks is some of the best I've slept and as far as I can remember. Why? But Why is that? I, I don't know. Maybe a new house. I got new sheets. New sheets actually were a big thing. Hey, new house, new sheets. Okay. Yeah, new sheets is a big thing. Uh, but, like, yeah, man. Like, I, I'm the same way. I, I'll stay up late at night and just... Just think. And just, yeah, think and just stare at darkness. Yeah. And it pisses, it pisses me off, when, especially when I'm trying to sleep. I get angry. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll take, like, a melatonin and... It does absolutely nothing. Yeah, you gotta jerk it too. You gotta. It's the combo. <laughs> it's the combo, and that will usually do it. But if it doesn't, if that you're doesn't fucked. do it, then then that's when I'm mad. That's when you're fucked. That's when I'm angry, dude. <laughs> but what brings you in town? What you doing this weekend? Uh, so mainly I'm here for Badger Base Camp, um, playing on Friday. Uh, I came early though because my friends. Usually when I come to Denver for a show, uh, some friends will like try to set up some like secret pop-up party for spicy boys and then we usually do like no lineup or do like secret guests and just you know the homies show up um just spicy boys artists and then just homies of theirs and yeah so usually i'll come early or stay a few extra days after you know the actual show that i'm supposed to be playing um and then, yeah we just will do a party here and there and Denver is just filled with so many homies too, so it's like mm. it's nice to catch up. But also, it's like all the homies are like talented producers too, so it's nice to, you know, share ideas and just talk Ableton music. <laughs> you know, it's like outside of a lot of my friends at home aren't uh, producers like that. I hang out with, so there's there isn't that common ground of that type of interaction yeah um and i'm sure it's same for you like we love that type of interaction absolutely <laughs> yeah, it's engaging but there's something special about that interaction that's like 
hey, dude, what are you up to? And you're like, nothing. And then that person's like, you want to do nothing together? You know what I mean? Like that's that you're true. like you're no, non-music yeah. friends. Like there's something special about yeah. that. Just sitting in on the couch, just watching shitty Netflix movies, ordering Taco Bell pizza. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I haven't had a Taco Bell pizza ever. Is this no? I meant like Taco Bell or and, pi- or oh, pizza. Do and not get or. a Taco Bell pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and or they called it a Mexican pizza. Yeah, the didn't Mexican they? pizza. Yeah, not a big fan of that one. I don't know, but I, I am a it. huge fan of Taco Bell. I am too, dude. Yeah. I'm not here to dog on Taco yeah. Bell, dude. Uh, Taco Bell's a, a goat. I got Taco Bell merch. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Yeah. We need to get you a Taco Bell sponsorship. Fucking, that'd be so sick. No, that, that would ruin. That would deteriorate <laughs> my health even faster. Than oh yeah. Already. Oh yeah. Ta- yeah. Fuck. You're not wrong about that. Uh, yeah, I've always joked around like I would love like a Waffle House sponsorship. <laughs> but yeah, I'd be fat. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, Taco Bell's definitely. Definitely a guilty pleasure. It's not something I try to get all the time, but mm, guilty it'll pleasures. be those 3 a.m. nights. What else is a guilty pleasure? It doesn't have to be food. It could be anything. Something Ooh. that you're like, ooh, I'm doing this, and I feel a little naughty about it, but I enjoy it. Ooh. Honestly, my guilty pleasure is food related. Yeah. <laughs> like binge eating at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know you're going to regret it. You're like opening up that bag of Takis and going in on that queso, and you know you're gonna hate yourself in the morning. Oh it's yeah, like, I, I, I'm gonna eat this whole bag. <laughs> you know those uh chicken biscuit crackers? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> what? Is that what they're called, chicken biscuits? Am I wrong, y'all? What brand is this? I don't fucking know. Can I pull up a picture of chicken biscuits if you can? Oh, he don't even have his screen out ready to rock. But uh, there's a <laughs> there's chicken a biscuit. yeah, or maybe it's chicken and biscuits. It's like a little cracker, but you get like the spray bottle of the spray cheese. Oh no! And that mo- that it's that's my guilty pleasure, dude. I eat one of those, and I like I'm like I have to go to the gym tomorrow, but it's uh I'll do it. Oh, there we go. So you ain't never seen them? No, no. <laughs> I think that's it's a little far from my culture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what type of <laughs> Your culture, what's your culture's cracker? <laughs> is it the just, rice cracker? Is it just me? <laughs> it would be the rice cracker. It's just all your white friends or is your culture's crackers? <laughs> no, um, no, I I mean, growing up in a Korean household, you don't really, at least my parents, we never got like just American snacks. Yeah. And like rice <laughs> and kimchi dude i could yeah. like asian oh, food's literally like my favorite type of food. Oh, i could yeah. eat i could eat like japanese food i could eat it every day or like instant noodles you know oh yeah just load that shit up yeah so your family was poor oh uh, yeah i mean <laughs> def- we're definitely not we definitely don't have a lot of money but. yeah yeah At what what like um is it like first state not first stage that sounds like a fucking can- like a form of cancer or like a but like <laughs> generation, there we go. What generation, like, uh, like Korean American, are you? Am I? Yeah. Um, wait. What would be? What What is considered first generation? I think like the family coming over, and if they have children, those children are the first generation. I could be wrong, but well, that's what I, I was think born it is. in Korea, and then I came here when I was five. Mm. So I think that is first generation. I would. I would. Yeah, I would I I'd, I'd say that. Yeah. Generation. Yeah. Damn, do you remember a lot of Korea or like? No, how- I barely remember. I barely remember my family. Like, I couldn't even picture their faces. What do you mean your oh, like? Like, grandparents, cousins, Got you. uncles. Got you. I I don't recall their faces. Mm. Um, I have a few memories of like, uh, with my grandpa, my grandma, because I spent a lot of time with them in Korea. Cause my parents were working. Um, but even then it's like, I barely have any memories. Like I remember my grandpa would take me to like the street markets in Korea when I was like a little kid. And then all the, there's a lot of street vendors out there. They're just doing their thing, whipping up. And I remember getting a lot of free food, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Free I, food. <laughs> so yeah, you don't even remember much. So was it, was it that hard, like coming to America or any of that just cause you're so young, but it? Um, it gets hard when you go to school because you don't know English. Oh shit! And then it's just like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so a lot of, 
I've got a lot of friends, um, a lot of other Korean friends and that are in the same situation. Um, so a lot of Korean people that move to the States, they uh, go to like Korean churches and there there'll be just everyone like you there. So a lot of us, you know, went through similar things and no, yeah, it's like you'll go to school and it's like you need to ask the teacher to go to the bathroom, but you can't. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. so you just whip out your dick. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I read that one, but you just make noises and, there, and stuff. Well, and, you know, there's always that one guy in like elementary school or whatever that would just whip out his dick. Was that you? No, 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 no. <laughs> but like, I felt like there, there was that guy in almost every, I won't even say elementary, but like there was a guy in my grade every year. I feel like he would just pull out his wiener. He's at, probably in jail now, right? <laughs> <laughs> if he starts off like that. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can learn new habits, you know, let's not give it to him that. Or he could just get addicted to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, another thing is, so... A lot of us have our actual names, which is Korean. Mm. So um, we all have interesting stories on how we get our American names. So I'm Kevin, and the way I got that was it all starts off with when the teacher, you know, first day they try to they call out everyone's names, and they have just the hardest time saying your Korean name, and just throughout the whole school year, nobody can say your name. So I remember, this is one of the few memories <clears throat> I have in my childhood, like me telling my parents and my grandparents, like they can't say my name. So my grandpa's like, just call him Kevin. <laughs> so that's that's why I'm Kevin. <laughs> Damn, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was simple what's, as that. What's the Korean name? Oh, I don't know if I, I, I don't just give that out. Okay, I mean. I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it fun or is it hard? I don't think it's hard but it's been hard for some people some people have nailed it but i will say i have the same name as the ceo of samsung the ceo of samsung Sam, yeah ceo of samsung Kyle, can you look this up or if you know it if, if you know it you can uh, just spew it out you know how i found this out my friends were trying to look up a mugshot of mine from years ago, and so they typed in my... We're going to go back to that <laughs> mugshot story, but <laughs> please yeah, continue. We, we uh, They typed in my Korean name, and all you see is the CEO of Samsung for tax fraud. <laughs> so oh, that's you amazing. You can't even find my mugshot. So on your driver's license, it doesn't say Kevin? No. Damn. So you've been lying to us this entire time? In a way. Damn, dude. <laughs> Han Jong-hee. Did I say that right? Oh, that must be a new CEO. The other dude must have, other dude must have just went to prison and he must have dropped out. Man, it's so cool seeing like different names from different uh, cultures. Okay. It says here the company had three CEOs. Oh, this is, so it would be CEO during uh, like 2017. When he says it, we will we'll blurb it. We'll bleed it out. <laughs> yeah, just say it and I'll bleep it out. You want me to say it? Right you now? have my word. I'll bleep okay. it out. Uh, oh, that's cool. But in Korean, or in all Asian languages, our last name is actually our first name. It's our surname, so it would be... How many Lees do you think there are in Asian culture? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I mean, my middle name's Lee. Let me go Probably ahead and say that. Probably the same amount as, like... I know Bruce and Jet. The same amount as there are, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards floating around in the world. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Probably a lot. <laughs> But it's always interesting hearing, like, uh, like just see, not not hearing, but yeah, hearing too. But like the different names from different cultures. I met a fan today at the gym, and he's an Indian guy. Uh, his name was Awad, and he was like, "Hey, man, I'm Awad." I said, "Awad, a what?" <laughs> no, yeah, names can be fun. Yeah, dude. <laughs> fucking these American names, just one fucking syllable. Kyle, Mitch, da David, <laughs> da that's two. David, um, yeah, that's two. Yeah, John. Yeah, I know a lot of Johns, <laughs> dude. I feel like most like white DJs you meet, their names are either Mike or Jake, and My Mike could be Michael too. There are a lot of Mikes and Jakes, it's a shit ton of them. <laughs> it's more Mikes though. It's kind of wild. Yeah, definitely more Mikes. Definitely no more Mike DJs. But you mentioned something, and I said we're going back to it. Mugshot, dude. Oh, we're going What'd you do? Now? Yeah. Oh man, it sounds fun. Well, there's three of them. Oh, damn, bad boy, dude. 
I don't know. I honestly don't know if I should share. <laughs> I mean, dude, you're an adult. If you did it when you were a kid, we've all done things. And no, I've talked about my troubles. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely before I, uh, most, oh, most of them were before I started Miso and, you know, tackling the industry. But my last one was actually the beginning of when I started Miso. Um, they were all just drug charges, you know, just having fun. And Were you slanging or you just got caught with some drugs? Both. Got you. <laughs> so the slanging was back, way back, and then the last one was, uh, you know, you're just driving through some some middle of nowhere. Mm. And then they're going to fuck you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. Oh, wait. <laughs> actually, I can share that that time. Um, so the last time I was in, where was I? I was coming home from Kansas City. And this was, you know, when I get when I first started playing shows. So you're only getting like, what, two hundred bucks for your pay? And you're not buying a flight. So, I think we had a weekend run from Iowa, somewhere else, and then Kansas City. Probably o Omaha, probably Nebraska. Somewhere. Was it's it Chris so Otter doing ago. those shows? Oh. I think Chris Otter was doing the Kansas City one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're on our way back home from Kansas City. It's like late, you know, and um, my homie gets pulled over for speeding, yada, yada, and they triple search us. And honestly, I think they planted something on us because, like, we were dry. <laughs> like, we partied. <laughs> we partied it all. Yeah, it shows yeah, down. So it's like. They tri triple search us and somehow they find, oh, what's this? And then so we all, we all get, you know, fucked. And um, it was found in my backpack apparently, but I'm like, really? But anyways, they, they got me and it was Shelby County in Missouri. The jail capacity was eight people. Oh, fuck. I was the eighth person. Oh, nice. <laughs> and they have no computers there. <laughs> It's all paper. So you, I go into wherever, this like just shithole where they pro where they process you and they just have a whiteboard to like for the records and stuff instead of computers. <laughs> and all did you see all the seven people, it was all cr like repeat. It was either repeat meth charges or domestic violence domestic with guns and oh, like shit. <laughs> raiding. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm in for a ride, aren't I? And then. Small ass room. They allowed you to vape in there for some reason. Damn. Right? Um they played the same movies on the TV over and over. What movies were they? Oh man. I don't remember, but it was really white. <laughs> it was some Ameri <laughs> it was American movie. I got you. Yeah. So so Mel Gibson. <laughs> some so oh, a lot of uh the 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 what am I Forrest Gump? Gen A. Oh yeah. That dude. played every night. It's a great movie. It is a great movie. Um, but no, yeah, it wasn't too bad because they weren't like, it's not like Chicago jail. Like they're not going to like try to fuck you or anything. They're just all like family dads addicted to math. Yeah. And, um, what's sucked though, cause in a city you'll go to jail and then you'll have court the next day and probably have you'll probably be out on bond and yours was after the weekend but here they're like judge will be here end of the weekend yep. friday so you have to wait till then so i waited till then friday comes i'm like sheriff where's judge and he's like he extended his vacation you gotta wait till <laughs> next friday so i was like i called my roommate i'm like oh we gotta do something and luckily uh we got a homie to like wire money and this, it gets more fucked because they're like, oh, we don't take electronic trips. <laughs> you have to have someone drive here with the cash. Damn, dude. So I had to wait another three days after that. Why does this jail rule? <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's crazy. And like, it, they have one shared stall, like, you know, to poo and whatever. And uh, you're, you weren't allowed to flush the toilet paper. <laughs> So the whole time it just reeks of shit. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. And then my I'll take it back, dude. This place sucks. <laughs> yeah, this, this is not fun. And then my friend finally got there with the cash, and, like, that doesn't happen there because 
all the dudes have like repeat meth offenses of forty thousand dollars, and they don't do the ten percent. It's full value. Oh yeah, they're like, I don't have the money, but I can fix your like, vehicles in any. <laughs> they need that full value, like forty thousand dollars cash, so like no one gets bailed out there. So my friend Damn. got there with the cash, and the and the cop was like. Can I count it? <laughs> like, are you sh- like, do you actually have the cash? <laughs> He's all sketchy about it, but I, yeah, I got out, and that was the last time I uh, decided to mess around. I'm like, all right, it's not worth it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer a criminal, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the last time I was in trouble. Damn, dude, what type of like uh, repercussions from that charge did you have? Like, what was it like, community service or like probation? Um, so all my, uh, I never got charged for any of. Uh, my arrest. Um, nice, dude. You got a good lawyer, huh? Yeah, paid a lot of money for those lawyers. You, it's like a lot of them. Most of them, I didn't even have to do like anything. It was just like, okay, you're good, bye. But that one, they made me do a year of uh, not like probation. It was like it was it was not probation, but it was like probation, but. It wasn't probation because I had no, you don't have a PO. Um, no one comes to check in on you. It was just like I had to go take my own drug test and send it to them. And then COVID happened. The pandemic happened. So they did these online classes. <laughs> All you have to do is sign in. That's it. <laughs> that ain't helping nobody. <laughs> That's it. So did that during COVID. <laughs> And um, just kind of just focused on the work. Yeah. Yeah. And then just, just kept doing it. Um, the only thing was I'm not – I'm a, I'm on a green card here. So if you get in trouble like that, like you can risk your green card. Oh, and fuck, dude. D- deportation. I did have to face that bef- uh, f- from a different time. But my friends ended up – doing a GoFundMe, and we raised uh, enough money to get, like, a good immigration lawyer. So, no, yeah, I'm out of trouble now. This is in the past. That's great, man. But Damn, that's crazy. I mean, crazy. there were fun times. How, like... I, I, I regret it, but I also don't regret it, but I regret it. Hey, bro. <laughs> it's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, it'll do that. The green card thing, like, I mean, you've been here since you were five, right? Yeah. I, like, have... How long until you're able to become, like... I don't know. It, a the, citizen? Yeah. Uh, so when you have a green card, the citizenship process honestly isn't too crazy, but I was getting in trouble. Got you. <laughs> so there. Don't want to file then. So, um, yeah, exactly. And um, you have to wait a little bit and not get in trouble to show, hey, I'm a, I'm a good boy now. Yeah. And then file. Um, if I mean, if they got mad at you, just blame it on the streets, dude. Like, I was just raised in America. It's like, this is what they taught me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Flip that, it that's on them. work. Yeah, yeah flip it on work. them, dude. Like, I learned this here. You think I, you think I learned this in Korea when I was five? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the no, fucking system. That's kind of true because, like, a lot of Koreans, especially, like, parents, they don't even know what, like, weed is, really. I remember when I first got caught smoking weed at home. You know, you have those vents throughout the house. I thought it goes outside. <laughs> it was blowing it. <laughs> it, it, it goes straight to the room. And, and they didn't know what it was? They are just looking everywhere. And then they, like, found the, the bowl. And then to to them. That was like, crack. Right. Crack yeah. or heroin. So it was a school night. They made me strip naked. Check for needle marks. Oh my god, it was crazy! Damn, dude, <laughs> tell me about Korean parents. How like ex- oh, like like man. real Korean parents? Real what Korean are parents? what are those like? Oh, you don't want to know. I, I do. I do. I'm curious. I don't want to experience it, but I want to hear your stories. Um, dude, it's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, not all of them are like that. I have definitely met some Korean parents that are like really sweet, really kind. But most of them, let's just, for example, one, you'll get forced to just learn all this stuff, which later on you'll be thankful for. Like, for example, I was forced to learn piano. Oh, hell yeah. At a lo- or at a young age. But it's like every note you mess up, you 
getting you're getting a metal ruler to your fingers. <laughs> Damn, but that's it, hardcore. Right. So as a kid, it's like that's fucked up. Yeah, but Mentally pressure, and pressure makes diamonds, man. But later on, you know, like when I think about it now, it's like if I wasn't trained like that, I wouldn't have learned the skills like that I have today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a pro and con to it, you know. Um, I guess if you can, I guess if you can like grow as you grow up, if you can understand the main focus of why they're like that, it, it, you, you accept it and it's like you do appreciate it in a way. Yeah, but it's also super traumatic. <laughs> and you'll never, you'll never, <laughs> like, did you just always have this fear of your parents? Dude? Oh, dude, fear of going home. <laughs> oh, shit, dad's home. Like, after school, like, walking home from my bus stop. Oh, dude, that no. Was crazy. <laughs> no. Um, and a lot of, a lot of kids, like, first generation uh, Korean kids will probably agree, but again, as they get older, you know, if they can, a lot of them do, like, overcome. Like just the negative emotions from it, and realize like why, I guess why why they did that. Um, even though <coughs> they can probably use less extreme measures, <laughs> being in America especially, um, it, it works out. And a lot of like me and a lot of my other uh, friends, um, like first generation Korean friends, um, at our age now, it's like we a lot of like for example I. I uh, obviously didn't have the best relationship with my family growing up because it was just fucked. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, now it's like, you know, after you put aside, uh, just put that aside and like a lot of us restart like the just the whole family relationship and like, you know, be the bigger guy or just everyone puts in their part and it's like, let's, we're family, like, let's. Let's just be a family, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, once you're all grown and it's like they don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. To you. So there's the stereotype and forgive me if this is offensive. I mean, no offense. It's just me fucking speaking uh, blindly, I guess. But um, there's like the stereotype with like the Asian parents where like you're forced to get good grades. Like they oh, expect yeah. you to be a doctor or like or like some sort of like. Yeah, A lawyer. is average. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. If dude. you don't come with an A, you're getting beat. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. Asian. That sounds like a plot line to a fucking weird porno. But anyway, so like any fucking, <laughs> like what I'm trying to say is, is is like there's that stereotype of like, you know, get good grades and then like they expect you to be like a doctor or like yeah. a lawyer or yeah. some some sort of like public defender or like some 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 big with like Something academic. with a nice peril. <laughs> yes. How do they feel about this? Oh, man. Well, now, okay, at first, goddamn. Well, so I moved out when I was 17. I was kicked out. And moved out or kicked out? Kicked out at what'd 17. You, what'd you do? Smoke weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> no big deal, parents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they didn't really have much say, like, with my life after that point, obviously, because I'm not talking to them or seeing them. Um, but I remember, I, so I was going to school for... Uh, nutrition, dietetics, and culinary. Um, and I, I was at my first semester of college. And I would just, like, not go to class, go to the commons, and try to learn FL Studio. But I would still do all, like, the homework and just teach it myself and was still getting the grades and stuff. But then one day, <clears throat> I just kept thinking, it's like, I have one life to live. Like, do I, like want to go through like the the motions of just you know just getting the good grades and doing whatever office job or whatever just for that paycheck and probably hate not hate my life but not fully enjoy my life you know because mm -hmm. i'm you're not i wouldn't be exactly like i love food and nutrition too but i definitely loved uh music more at the time i mean even i mean now too and then so it was like I just kept thinking, like, if I have one life to live, why not, like, die trying to 
do what I want to do. Fuck yeah, dude. Right? And then um, as I, like, was thinking that, I uh, had chemistry class in, like, the next 15 minutes, so I, like, go there. And I went to that class because chemistry was not um, something I was that good at. So I'm like, all right, I got to go to the class and actually pay attention to, you know, do the work because <clears throat> I probably wouldn't have been able to do it myself. So I go to the chemistry class. It's the first day of that class. And um, it's a three-hour lecture. And at the end of the lecture, the the, the, prof- the professor's like, all right, I'm going to do a head count, like, at the end of the class. He didn't call my name. <laughs> so I go up to him. He didn't call my name. <laughs> Found out I went to the wrong class. <laughs> all right, I'm dropping out. <laughs> That was the sign for me of fully <laughs> dropping out. Peace out. <laughs> Bro, how long have you been going to that? Was that the first class of the semester? Yeah, or? so okay. it was the second semester. So, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> but that was the first time you were going to that class, right? For that class. Okay, yeah. thank God. That would have been fucked if it's like midway through the semester. <laughs> you're like, right? You're like, damn, Mr. No. DeRosa got dark. Oh, well, yeah, you know? but no, my first semester, it was different classes, and the teachers like saw that I would still turn in my work even though i never showed up and i would just have friends that would, that would sign in for me mm. and even in high school like same thing like the teachers never they would like call me to the principal's office like you haven't showed up class for this long but you have straight a's so we can't really say anything to you was, like that's how it always kind of was and then i would just spend my time just in high school, I wanted to, I was break dancing. I had like my own break dance crew. Oh, and shit. that's that's what I originally wanted to do. Can you still do it? Yeah, yeah, can not you? definitely not as uh, as good as back then, but I can definitely do like windmills. Do you think you have enough room back there to bust something down for us? Anything? Right here. Right here. Would, right now. If we move this table, definitely. Maybe at the end. Maybe, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe at the, the end, end we can get a clip, yeah. and then we'll. Yeah. Or we'll put we it can in. just like record it somewhere else. Yeah, and you well, can I, we'll, it on. we'll we'll record on my phone. We'll yeah, I can just this. like do it in your in, right there in the, in the other room. I'm ready, dude. All right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Easy peasy, and it's funny because actually Molokai recently moved in, and um. I had uh this month I have had Jeff Fufu stay at my house for a month because we are we uh we're starting this side project and we've just been writing this album and um I showed them this great breakdance documentary movie which is also the history of hip hop and it's crazy because not a lot of <clears throat> people know um w- the elements of hip hop and you know they're just a lot of people think it's like gangster rap or whatever but it's actually Breakdancing, graffiti, emceeing, um, shit, what was the other ones? But gangster rap is not part of the hip hop core elements of hip hop. Yeah. Breakdancing is actually the main element of hip hop. And, um, it was, it was a great, like, historic. Uh, DJing, emceeing, yeah. rapping, breakdancing, graffiti. Yeah. I think you forgot DJ, yeah. which is <laughs> no, yeah. which is surprising. <laughs> I think you forgot yeah. DJ. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's a, it's a it's called Planet B Boy. You can watch it for free on YouTube. It's great for any like dancer, artist, musician, or people that love hip hop. It's great because you can see how it all started and how it spread, and also how it got corrupted. Mm. But how d- sorry, go ahead. Well, media, wanna... media, mainstream media. God yeah. damn it. They they took they saw that it was profitable, and then they did like it was like almost like disco bullshit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like mm. it wasn't they like took the break dancing and just made some bullshit out of it, and then you know took as much money as they could, and then it just died out. And then now we have like I'm not I love rap too. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but now we have that. He's got a little clip up here for us. But yeah, what you're yeah. explaining is like this, the same cool. thing happened with dance music. Like dance music used to be kind of like a, uh, like a, a gay thing. You know what I mean? Like it really was. It came from like gay culture. I know <laughs> he's laughing about that, but like a lot of like house music and stuff. The only time places like Chicago is a big yeah. part of it as well. But like the only time that you would hear dance music and stuff like that <laughs> back in the day would be like at gay bars. Oh, and yeah, no, it's yeah, it's great. And then it goes into like. Um, 
how breakdancing, because right now breakdancing actually getting popular, way more popular, and like as the years go, because it's on, they got on uh, the Red Bull tournaments, and now apparently it's part of the Olympics too now. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah. Um, which which uh, which country has the best dancers? Okay, so Korea has always been undefeated. Wow. Um, except right now, Japan is kind of taking over. So it was always Korea and Japan at the finals. Korea would win, but right now Japan is winning as of the past two, three years. And then it would be like France. And surprisingly, breakdancing started in the U.S., in the Bronx, but U.S. has never really, they never really flourished. Mm. <laughs> in ter- once like the Asians and the Europeans got into it, it was just- It's over with. It was just completely another level. Um, yeah, so that movie goes into how um, this guy in Germany started this event called um, uh, Battle of the Year. So what they do is they take a crew, they do a contest in different countries of the world, and the winner of that uh, country meet in Germany to do that one final face-off, and for that year they become the champion. And that was the event that was able to push breakdancing um like to get more popular but also to put it on like media and stuff because again like back then there was you could not make money yeah doing it but now like if you make it onto something like that you'll you'll be able to get uh hired at just events to do that show or performance or whatever um, so it's really cool and it's really inspirational because back, it, it, I think the movie is from like 2007. And again, there was like no money. The prize money for these things were like $2,000 that you have to split with your whole crew. But it was about the recognition you get. And, um, all these dudes are like, they're like older dudes and, um, they're just like, sa- they sacrifice, you see like how much they sacrifice like their whole lives and they just train, train, train. It's very motivational. So I showed that to Jeff Fufu and Molokai, um, like last week, and then they're like, "We want to learn break dancing, so we'll be like producing." And then I'll be like, "All right, everyone, time for time for six step. That's like a foundational footwork move, and yeah. it's like it's also a great workout. Um, it works out like all, all like so many muscle groups, including muscle groups that you wouldn't normally work out if you went to the gym, and it's great for producers because we sit." all day yeah and it, it does like it just, just it just works out a lot of things and on top of that it's a great um artistic release and uh just because um there's no like rules really in break dancing you're allowed to come up with the moves on the spot so it's like freedom of expression just like you know when we open up our dog and we we're able to create whatever the fuck we want but you're doing it as you do like this physical flow and you're just, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's super healthy and uh, you're just releasing emotions and yeah, it's, it's a good time. So it sounds like you're still doing it a lot. Not a lot, I would say, um, just because most of my time does go into like music related stuff. Um, definitely not as much as I would want to, but I've definitely, recently definitely been, um, trying to get more and more into it especially now that i have people like living with me that are also interested in it it's always it's always more uh motivational and just easier to do when you have like peers that are wanting to do the same thing with you Mm -hmm. you know or just like if you live with other producers too like you see them grinding and it's like all right i gotta grind too now Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know yeah i live with the producer now oh yeah i've done nothing but live with producers since i moved out here and yeah, it's just like, yo, come listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of this? And like, fuck, dude. It sucks. <laughs> just tell them it sucks and make yourself feel better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, w- I wanted to bring up Spicy Boys. It'd be a disservice to have you on and not talk about it. Yeah. What do you uh what do you want to ask about? I want to ask about everything, dude. Everything. So okay. you started Spicy Boys. Yeah. And that's been going on for a long time. And, like, things like Spicy Boys and then, like, Lost Dogs and, like, even, like, Wakan at some point, it, it kind of starts as just, like, these, like, internet producers, like, friends who right, just, yeah. who you are making this interesting type of music and you find other people that make 
music like that and right. you're like hey let's That's, fucking let's start a crew yeah or uh so for spicy boys before i even found those producers um my roommate he's not a producer right one of my best friends john i was living with him back in the day uh we loved hot sauces <laughs> like our fridge was full of hot sauces and you know he'd just be drunk and be like we had the spicy boys <laughs> 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 not the music, you, not music. Said it, though, oh, that's exactly said. how we would say it. it's like spicy. <laughs> do it again, boys. do it again, do it again. <laughs> Where are the spicy boys? I love it. I just love chugging it. hot sauce with with no food, just chugging hot sauce. Uh, damn, drunk as fuck, four a.m. Dude, <laughs> chasing chasing liquor with hot sauce. <laughs> the acid reflux as you get that night, dude. How many tums? Did yeah, you have but to the eat? kick you get out of it, yeah, I'm sure, dude, <laughs> makes up for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh. It was something me and my roommate just we like to call ourselves, and then I started uh, started producing, and um, discovered a web, a sine wave web, you know, <laughs> like, and there wasn't really much of that going on when I first discovered it, except for you know like just our peers that you know I'm sure that you're familiar with, and a lot of people kind of started it doing that at the same time ish. I feel like. Um, but at the same time, there wasn't too much of it. There wasn't like YouTube videos or tutorials or whatnot. So I came across other people kind of doing that too on SoundCloud. And it's like, hey, I like what you do. And it's like, it's you don't hear that everywhere else. Like, let's be friends. And then made a Facebook group chat. A lot of them happen to be gamers too. And I love video games. So it was like, that's another thing. Like now I have these other people I can connect with that most of my friends at home have no idea <laughs> about. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, it started as a group chat on Facebook and we were just, just sharing, sharing our music, playing games together. And it's like, all right, let's start, let's start a SoundCloud and release, release this shit to the world. Like, yeah, that was kind of how it all started. And then I just kept accumulating, um, just other people as I just just kept exploring, you know, I, I spend a lot of time exploring for new music constantly um, <coughs> for Spicy Boys, you know. Uh, and yeah, just kept accumulating and accumulating and here we are today. Damn. And and <laughs> I mean, running like a because now it's like a it's is it weird calling it a label? Oh, it's definitely not. Yeah, definitely not a label because one, I don't do like. There's, I don't do like contracts or anything. And it's like at any point if the artist wants to take their track down, it's like they're free to do so. Yeah. Um, we would do an agreed upon like royalty split, usually 50 50, or if they want more or whatever, it's like we'll discuss it. And it's just man to man or, you know, human to human, just uh, agreement and like no contracts. And it's just like, Hey, like I have a platform, you know, you can put your stuff out on. And if you see that as viable, like let's do it. And again, I don't own, it's not something I'm taking ownership of. Um, and on top of that, um, back in the day it was usually the same core people that was releasing, but as time progressed and as it grew, there would be, you know, other people that just are submitting and, are wanting to be a part of it. And to me, it's like, I love good music. And I think the experience that comes with good music, it's like, it's special. And I think, you know, it's something other people should be able to enjoy and experience as well. And so, yeah, it's not definitely, I wouldn't consider it a label, if anything, a collective. Okay. Or just a silly platform for the community. Yeah. Yeah. Running a collective like that, because, I mean, you have, you're doing Miso, you're doing the side project that you mentioned that we're going to get into. I mean, you're running this collective, and I and I heard something a long a while ago, and I don't know if you're still doing it. Were you doing, like, an agency, too, at some point? Yeah, so. Well, um, well, 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 okay, <laughs> so that's a good, yeah, let's let's get into that in a second, but, yeah. like, because I, I want to stay on the topic of Spicy Boys. Bro, like, how the fuck, like, are you able to, like, run all this? Well, for Spicy Boys, I did have a partner. I'm sure a lot of you are aware. Um, Hunter. 
or I think, not. I think I've heard a little bit. Yeah, he was. He didn't really make himself very uh, publicly known, or like he wasn't. He was a quiet guy. Um, yeah, he did. He helped a lot, a lot at the start and the building process, and um, he did all the artwork back then. Um, so I did have help, and so I wasn't just running it on my own. I focused mainly on the music, finding the music and just the music aspect. And he did a lot of uh, just like emails, management, artwork and stuff. But eventually we just uh, had separate visions. And it was just his vision and my vision. It was just he, I guess he wanted more of a label approach. Mm -hmm. But I, I was just for the community approach. And uh, we, we tried to, you know, we tried to, like, find the middle ground. But that never happened. And also COVID happened, and it was just kind of, we went on, like, a hiatus. Um, and I wanted to get back to work after, like, a year, two years. But we just couldn't find that middle ground, so we weren't able to get back to work. So I was eventually like, well, I'm going to get back to work with or without, and I'm going to just take charge here. I don't care if you disagree because mm. we ha I had, I built this or we built this and I started it and it's like, it needs to continue. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, so now I am running it kind of mostly on my own. I do have, I did find, um, an in-house, uh, graphics guy. He makes, he's so talented. He goes by Voltron Cicada. He does all my miso stuff right now. Um, it makes all the spicy boy stuff. And then when I throw my own shows too, he'll he'll do all the assets and stuff. So I do have a lot of help on that aspect because I don't have any graphic design <laughs> experience. And um, try fucking with AI, bro. Uh, well, so a lot of the times it will start with Mid Journey AI, and then I'll send that idea to him, and then he will either recreate it or take that and replicate it into. Uh, something that's not just a copy and paste yeah just take the inspiration right yes yeah. just so then because again it's we're not a big team but we need to so i like to do uh seasonal comps compilations so like spring to summer winter halloween christmas whatever um and to just keep up with that it's like that whole starting off with the ai really helps the speed process of like all right, so it's a uh, summer. Let's type in some kind of summer topic, and then just until we get a image that sparks just other ideas, you know, it's it's that's it, that's the process that I've been doing since I've uh, restarted the Spicy Boys after that hiatus and did a little rebrand because I lost um, rights to the artwork because that was all made by my other partner. Gotcha. So I found Tyler Voltran Cicada, and then this is kind of the process that we've started to be able to keep up with the schedule. And it's been working out pretty well. I'm very satisfied with the outcome of it. And I think I think the general, like, people are satisfied with it too, especially because um, there's been uh, an increase of traffic of people wanting to get involved. Yeah, that'd be the hardest part, just going through all the demos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I do, I take demos, like, once a year, and it's from, like, my Stuff Me mix, and I'll get, like, five, 600 tracks. Yeah. So, back then, we used to, like, publicly advertise, like, here's our submission email. It was too much. So, we do have, like, that email on our social media and SoundCloud and stuff, but we don't publicly advertise it. So, it's honestly not as flooding. A lot of the tracks and artists that I do find is from my own exploration and research, and mm. I'll just reach out to them. And, but there are definitely submissions here and there where it's like, okay, like this is this is nice, yeah, <laughs> you know. And it's like, who are you? Right? <laughs> They'll have like hundred followers, and it's like, okay, oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> I've gotten some emails from some yeah. folks where it's just like a song, and I'm just like, who the fuck? Yeah. Are you? And then I saw uh, my boy. You know, Austin out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, yeah. he's the man. Yeah. He's the fucking man, but I met him just because he started shooting me fucking 
emails of some tunes and now he's a friend you know yeah. what i mean come over and kick no, it yeah, we're working him. on a tune I fucking what a dude yeah he's uh he was one of the newer people that uh has joined and has been pretty active yeah um, as far as when we rebranded and stuff and, oh yeah he's actually part of so badger base camp um the night i'm headlining it's a spicy boys uh takeover and he's part of that night how fun is it to curate those lineups for Spicy Boy Takeovers? Oh, it's it's really fun because, um, one, the people that I do involve in these lineups are, one, people that are active, um, like active within it. And if they're active within it, it's like we're probably going to be friends, good friends by then. Mm -hmm. And sh have already shared, like, back-to-backs and good times together. So it's like get down with you know your friends and, mm -hmm. your fr and you know they're gonna throw down too so it's like hell yeah and then people see that not only do they see like oh they're throwing down but they all co they also can see like the the connection that we do have because at the end they're always most of the times will be a bit big back to back you know and it's like you just see the connection and just the just people loving that moment together just jamming out together and at the same time people in the crowd are enjoying it just as much and it's it's a great time you're yeah. a fun dude to back to back with though <laughs> yeah i remember the cosmic uh cosmic kingdom, kingdom dude. i'll tell you what dude sometimes when you're back to back because we've done like late night ones too but that one was like where we did a whole set yeah. it was supposed to be me at the after party i was supposed to be like headlining the after party yeah. but it's like you smith who else was it i think todd toadface I think it was Toadface. Yeah. And, also, and also uh, Space Wizard Mike. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it, every time you touch the decks, everybody else, we're just, like, <laughs> packed around each other just, like, watching you fucking do magic. We're, like, getting pumped on the things that you were doing, bro. It was really funny because we're all throwing on bass music, and then Smith would just play hip-hop. It's yeah. not even edit. It's just, like, yeah. old-school hip-hop. <laughs> In like 90s southern hip hop and it, it was funny but every time you would do something we all got hyped right behind you because you're just you're a good fucking dj dude um thank you thank you i appreciate that um because not a lot of people actually recognize the just the technical things going on they you know they just listen and it's a good time yeah which is still great um but i the start of my music or edm history was um, you were DJing, and if you did a wrong so, transition, your parents would hit you with the fucking metal <laughs> rule. <laughs> no, I was already moved out by that. Um, <laughs> That'd make you a know, good DJ. No, in, in Chicago, back then, now there's definitely, like back then, there wasn't anyone really producing. It was all DJs. DJs left and right. Clubs left and right. I saw it was back in Mississippi. Yeah, just till like 9 a.m. Yeah. Like, I mean, it still is, but now there's definitely more producers like everywhere um but back then it was all djs and all the older dudes that you know i got to know and they they fucked with me and were like hey we're gonna take you to this club and you know, you're underage but it's okay and like they would show me just because they were all like vinyl back then mm. hardcore djs so yeah i dj'd for you say anywhere from three to five years before i even like decided to open fl because i realized well just djing is not gonna get me anywhere outside of these clubs yeah you just be in chicago and like yeah and um so back then before covid there it was still fun it was it was great because there was so much so many places you can dj from not just these nightclubs but like some shady ass like shed behind some taco restaurant in the ghettos. <laughs> I oh, played dude. a lot of those. And, that's like, that's all we had in Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> just a lot of those random lofts, and like you would literally get followed by homeless people walking from your car <laughs> to these lofts. But yeah, so there was a lot of that. Um, so yeah, I DJed for a long time um, before I started producing, and it was funny because I wasn't even I didn't even listen to EDM growing up. Uh, I graduated high school, and my friends were all planning to go to Somerset, Wisconsin together. They had an extra ticket. They needed someone to drive. They're like, Kevin, just drive us, and we'll, we'll give you this ticket. And I was like, I don't know what it is, but sure. I like hanging out with you guys. Let's go. And then I, got, I went to this festival, 
and then witnessed like EDM festival music for the first time it was like 2014. I saw RL Grime, Keys and Crates, a lot of trap music. Cause mm. Back in the day, that's what trap, got me into it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I fell in love with you know RL old school RL Grime, Keys and Crates, um, old school like Nightmare. A lot, of, a lot, yeah, a lot, yeah. Chicago floss, mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of, a lot of trap music and future bass, and of course there was house everywhere. Um, so house and trap, and then a year or two later, dubstep and rhythm came in, like heavily came into Chicago, and that was like, it's still like mainly what we have. So much rhythm, I, it, rhythm's great, but there, there is definitely a lot of it in Chicago. Dude, like, Chicago's a hard crowd. What do you mean by that, dude? I've played Chicago. I, I was at your uh, base station show, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, that yeah. one, that was outside that was, of Chicago. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, they still, yeah, it's still, that show was it's great. still Chicago people. <laughs> Listen, I love Chicago. I've played yeah. there like probably like eight or eight times maybe. And all the times had just been okay until recent. Like the like last. Like in terms of crowd reaction? Yeah. Mean? I remember I was my last, like. Were they all, were you? Were they all headliner? headliner no, shows? not all of them. But like, I know I did my like, I did my headline for Blue Collar Bass, yeah, and like the whole I was, tour. I was there too. You had that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that tour was crushing. And I remember being on stage, just like, do these people fucking hate me? No. Nah. And then, and then I will say, I went back last year for my birthday and did, uh, like, I think it's Joe's on Weed Street. That was another headline, and that show was fucking bonkers. And I was like, thank you. I was right. like, I was starting to doubt Chicago. <laughs> I literally was starting to doubt Chicago. No, uh, yeah, Chicago can be like that sometimes. Like, they may not be, like, jumping up and down, but the fact that they showed up in the first place when they when there's, like, eight other shows that night yeah. that are probably just as fire. I don't now, know. Don't you say that. Hey, Chicago's <laughs> lit. Like, Mine was the hey, best. Colorado has a lot of bass music. Don't get me wrong. Probably the best for bass music, but Chicago has got... It's just a variety every night, like variety of quality music from different genres. Same with food. Mm. Um, so the fact that they even showed up, I'll tell you this: I had the worst pizza in my fucking life oh. on my on my birthday in Chicago. What? Where? Where was this? Joe's on Wheat Street. Uh, oh, was it the one across the street with the dollar slices? I don't think so. I think it was made at that fucking place because it's like a Florida Gators bar connected to it. So you got a pizza. You got the pizza at Joe's on Weed Street. Yeah, the promoter. The promoter. The promoter. It's not a pizza place, bro. It's Chicago. It's like, dude. I I literally was the promoter's like I was hungry and I was like I'm gonna go get some like pizza or a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, Yeah, we got pizza here. And so he brings it to the green room. I ate a slice. I put it down. And I kind of chewed him out a bit. Not like in a dick, being a dick, but like kind of, but mostly funny. I was like, dude, this fucking place. No, you don't want to get. Food at the venue in Chicago. Dude, you I know, go... I know it's different in like, especially like in southern cities. Yeah, I was about like to say. those bars. You could go they, to a gas they, station, get fire. They get food. they have fire bar food. No, they, Chicago don't give a fuck. They're gonna first of all charge you fifteen bucks for a shot. They're, they just they're just gonna. I did ha- hustle you. I did have that uh one alcohol that y'all drink. What's that thing oh, called? Oh, don't say Malort. It was. That was it like was the it was worst some experience ever. Huh? It was some asshole Florida fan. So you'll like this. So it was a like this bar is literally like a Florida Gators bar. And I'm a I'm a college football <laughs> fan. And LSU was playing Florida. And I was obviously rooting for LSU. And me and my boy Comus were the only LSU fans in that bar. The whole place packed out Florida fans. This guy comes and brings me a shot, I'll track, acting all buddy buddy. Hey, I got you this shot, being all buddy buddy. <laughs> And he hands me the shot. I'm like, oh hell yeah! So I'm like, I, this you know, poison. And I took it. I was like, this is the worst fucking the thing. The worst thing. And then so anyway, the promoter gave me a bottle of it. Yeah. Oh. So I walk like over big, to I walk like, fuck you. <laughs> I walk over to his entire table, and I give everybody a shot. <laughs> Not just me. Everybody. It's funny because like, ninety percent of people in Chicago will never touch it. Yeah, and I, then there's that ten percent that absolutely love it, and it's like, all right, you need therapy. <laughs> yeah, it's the fentanyl it of like, alcohol. No, no, literally, it tastes like earwax. Yeah, it's bad. It smells like earwax. Tastes like it's, it doesn't even taste like liquor. It's like, but I got them back. <laughs> oh, true, I got them back. <laughs> yeah, no, um, a lot of um, a lot of other artists when they come to Chicago, they'll. Uh, you know, save money on their hotel and stay with me, especially because I live like 10, 15 minutes from O'Hare. And I got other producers at my crib and a pretty decent studio. So it's 
it's a, it's a nice spot for other artists to come stay, hang out. Some of them end up staying extra days. <laughs> um, but, you know, they'll go to their show and just fans or promoters would be like, oh, first time in Chicago, you got to try Malore. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you guys go through this. Yes, yeah, good on you, bro. Uh, no, I, I'm a I'm a worse person than you are. I'd be like, I would hype it up. I tell them it's the best shit they've ever had. I'd be like, dude, you should get a double. No, I, I, I and I've seen a lot of like homies that'll be it'll be their like first time in Chicago, and they'll get a little carried away, and then they're just puking before they're set. I won't name names, but it's like, no, nah, we don't need to get to that. I won't name names. Taboo. We, 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 <laughs> We could we could do that after the set. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we skimmed over it, and you laughed as it's mentioned. But I have to talk about it. I want to talk about. It. You don't have to, but you started an agency, didn't you? So I didn't start it. Um, it was actually Zach Dubhub. Yeah, um, Zach's the man. Yeah, he's he's he's. He's great. He's I love done him. a lot for the Chicago scene. Yeah, he's done a lot for me done, too. I'm not yeah. even in Chicago. Oh yeah, and he he's done a lot for the scene and just a lot of art, other artists. Like he he does so much, but also it's like you can see, um, just his dedication in in it. He's not just like doing it for clout. Like he's not just helping artists for clout. Like he he's a genuine person. Genuine person for sure. Um, at times he may. Seem too busy, but it's just he's just busy. But I, actually, I want to go throw it out. Zach's the one that gave me that bottle. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, he's a good too. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a great that, guy. That's to, a good time. I he like, likes, I love he likes having a good time. Yeah, he's the best. Um, yeah, so Zach is the one who started it with uh, his business partners, um, and then they wanted. I was, uh, I was, a. Uh, I don't hang out with them as much now, just because of how busy. We both are, but at that time, we were hanging out, like, all the time. And, um, obviously, he doesn't just love rhythm. He loves all music. And, you know, he knew that I had a community of bass music artists. And they were like, hey, do you want to, like, bring on some of your boys? And especially because a lot of uh, the underground artists, you know, they they don't have... They don't have that agent pushing them or a manager pushing them. So it's like, let's try to do that. And um, so we did that for a while. Uh, brought on a lot of, you know, friends that we believed in. And, yeah, we did. And it was during the pandemic when nothing was, like, really going on. So we used a lot of Florida. <laughs> we used a lot of Florida. Florida and, was popping. Oh, yeah. Florida was popping. Um, you know, it was great. Great experience. Um, I also want to do it f to learn the uh, behind the scenes of like just you know what agents do and uh just that whole show business um so i did that for a while and um i think just playing footsies with yeah you? playing footsies bro that's cool we can keep <laughs> we can keep playing footsies continue talking we'll keep playing we'll keep playing keep going keep going your feet are so warm it's so nice it's so nice <laughs> no yeah we were we were doing that for a while but there was just like Eventually, when COVID kind of started dying out, you know, um, like Me So Project, and then Zach has more shows, just, just, there was just busyness that came in, and we kind of stopped doing it. I uh, eventually had to reduce the amount of artists that I was doing bookings for, just because it's, it was like, I mean, some of them did so well. I remember, um, exotics the first year ish uh we were able to get them to lost lands so some of them it was like at that point it's like there's not much i can do for you at this point like mm -hmm. you, you should probably move on to the next agency um and at the same time it was just too many artists and so i told them what was up like hey you know just not not a lot of time and my energy that i can pour out give you guys like the full support so it was just like um yeah it was just a mutual like everyone's mutually understanding of like yeah i think it's time to move on and also i got the experience and the learning that i wanted to and we did that for like two almost three years something like that i am 
Yeah. Um, and it was great, especially because, again, there was nothing going on and everyone was struggling. And it was nice to be able to not just help and also learn, but also connect with more with these homies and artists, too. But, yeah, that was a, it was a great experience. Um, will I do it again? Probably not. Mm. Um, it's not a passion of mine. It was, again, it was, it was just the timing of it was great to do because – not only was I able to learn a lot of things that I wanted to learn that I was interested in, and also I got to work with homies and also help the homies too. Mm. And um, yeah, so yeah, I it was called Muse Talent. Um, I don't think anyone else is active on there anymore. Again, everyone's just so busy. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was it was great. I know Zach still has a few of his artists originally, like the homies from Chicago, uh, Unit, Brute, Zen. They're crushing it. They're, they're definitely gaining, you know, leveling up. Um, he still does, like, management and bookings for them now. But as far as everyone else, I think we all kind of moved on to just our other businesses. Man, works. I'll say you're fucking brave for trying to, like, you're like, I want to learn behind the scenes. Dude, behind the scenes fucking sucks. It, yeah, it does. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I wanted to learn, to be able to, like, counter when I needed to. Yeah. You know, and I was able to learn a lot of it. And now it's, like, because I did most of my bookings on my own. Even, even to this day, I do have a new manager now, um, Adrian. He lives in Romania. He's got a lot of, like, he's got the resistance, Beast Boy, Victim, a lot of, like, the heavy dubstep slash rhythm hitters. I don't know why he picked me up, but, no, he's, it's been great, and it's the first time that I've actually enjoyed working with a manager, and uh, just because I've had a lot of, like, people reach out to me, and it's, like, I'll do, like, a trial run, but it's, like, they don't give a crap about me. Mm. But Managers it, are tough, man. I yeah. mean, I've gone through... Yeah. My fair share. Yeah, so many of homies, like, I've only heard so many countless stories of, like, just them not getting, you know, treated the way they wanted to. Yeah. And that's, like, big. Because f- to us, with what we do, it's, like, I feel like one of the most important things, Munchie told me this, um, to an artist, the most one of the most important things is just that peace of mind. If you don't have that peace of mind good luck finishing that track, mm. you know? Like, if you don't have that just serenity. Yeah, feeling comfortable. Space, yeah. yeah. If you're constantly stressed or, like, there's just something on your mind. Like, your mind has to be, I'm not like, not blank as in brain dead, but, like, free. Like, mm-hmm. free from just whatever bullshit. At least for me. And I know a lot of people agree, too. It's like... <laughs> Excuse me. Happens, dude. We're drinking yeah. cold beer. Let's drink him some bushies. Let's drink him. Let's oh, drink yeah, him let's together. Let's drink him. Let's drink him together. <laughs> let's drink him. That is cool, though. You're like, all right, let me try to start booking some artists. I, I won't say I could never because I don't like that type of attitude coming out of my mouth. But, like, it's, uh, dude, there's, like, two things in the industry that are, like, like two positions I feel like are kind of cutthroat and you kind of have to big dick your way out of it. Agencies and promoters. You have to really big dick. Oh, yeah. You have to you have to big dick. You're gonna end up having people hate you. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But you're gonna have to big dick them. Too. Yeah, yeah. No, that's why they'll end up hating you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does I suck mean, when you get big dick. And I remember, Kyle. like, I remember before all that, like, and even now. Well, now not as much, but back in the day when I was kind of first starting to play shows, it's just like they'll big dick you. And because you're, I, you're love, just, I love that that stuck. Yeah, Let's keep it going. Because they'll big dick you, but but you're not a headliner level yet. Yeah, so it's like you just gotta take that big dick. You do, you do. They yeah. big dick you hard. Oh yeah, they'll big dick you. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing. Because if you do say something, they'll just blacklist you or whatever. And it's like, okay, damn, it sounds like rape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell me I'm wrong, dude. You're not. Tell me I'm wrong. The big dick you, and you can't say anything. Yeah, and it's until you get to that like headliner level, whether it's on your own independently or with a different company agency, it's like you can't. You don't have a. You don't have a word. Yeah, you just gotta you take it. Yeah, you gotta take it. I remember, man. I was a. Uh, you just gotta take a big dick. I was uh, working at a gay bar, and I was. At, 
I was at that gay bar for like two and a half years as a DJ, and I'm like, I was getting paid the Wait, same. Wait, which, which city was it? Jackson, Mississippi. Fuck it. And I was, I was like, I was this DJ there for like two and a half years. They tried like, went through a bunch of different DJs before me, and like, I was a badass club DJ. I'm still a badass DJ, but like, as far as yeah, like top 40 shit goes. I love your sets, by the way. Thanks, dude. I love Such your face. Um, but like, <laughs> but like, they would, uh. Like, I remember getting the same pay for, like, two and a half years, and I was, like, what was the pay? struggling. $200. I'd for get paid, hours. oh, six to eight. <laughs> what? That's not, that's not. Wait, six, six to eight. hours. Six to eight hours. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what were you DJing? <laughs> what music were you DJing? Everything, dude. Everything. Uh, you know, I'm a lot of gay music. A lot of that. But like, dude, honestly, like, you know, once Cardi B and came out, dude, the the gay bar got hood quick, dude. They wanted to hear the hard hey, shit. I was playing Boosie. Get lit. They get lit. They get lit, dude. Because I would DJ at like rock bars, like all different type of bars in Mississippi. The only place that was fun as a DJ was the gay bar because people <laughs> wanted to actually dance. Yeah, gay guys they are the get, best. They get down. Gay oh, guys yeah. are the best dancers. Lesbians, y'all better oh, step are. it up. Because gay guys can outdance any lesbian they, that they, I've seen. They, That's just my personal opinion. They definitely that I've seen. like they'll let loose. For they sure. will, dude. Gay guys yeah. are the most fun time. But uh, I remember going to ask for a raise, and I got big dicked by a lesbian. <laughs> she big dicked me, dude. And there's nothing I could do. I just had to take it. <laughs> um, my first DJ gigs were like paid DJ gigs that weren't at some shady loft or whatever. It was actually at a children a children's trampoline park for like 2 years it was 9 to 11 p.m. every friday saturday 40 bucks an hour it was sick cuz they let they said i can play whatever as long as i blur out the swear so i was doing like bro stuff whatever oh, yeah. else you do like, like deep house bro stuff and no it was a good time i would have my boy baby boy come with me just back to back and then afterwards it was like all right we're crashing a house party find one your your <laughs> baby boy uh, it's a homie. His nickname is Baby Boy. I got you. Because yeah, you said my baby boy. I'm like, you sure you weren't DJing at a gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's his, his one of my best friends, uh, Nick. Nice. Shout out, uh, Nick. But we call him Baby Boy because he's he's tiny, tiny guy. So he looks he looks like Baby Boy. It's perfect. Perfect. Nice. Um, I remember one night, though, it was about to close. Um, last Last drop, right? And I knew there was a swear that it was like, Get the fuck down or something, right? I knew that pre-drop vocal Bang was coming. your fucking head, bitch. <laughs> and I fucking filtered it out and then let go of the filter too soon. And then it just went, get the fuck down. <laughs> you get all the parents, no, I didn't get in trouble, but all the parents were like. <laughs> but thankfully, it was like as they were leaving. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was at my one slip up. But yeah, that was my first DJ gigs. Um trampoline park and it's funny because recently in denver or w where is it where's bounce empire it's not denver it's like Kyle, 30 40 bounce, minutes away you want to look at bounce it's in fort collins colorado no, springs no, no it's not that far uh it's not that far it's yeah. like 30 minutes from denver bounce empire Kyle. Bounce empire bounce. is in lafayette lafayette yeah yeah like 30 minutes from denver um great place uh it's 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 real nice huge uh not a trampoline park, but it's like a bounce park with a bunch of crazy like obstacle course stuff. Really big, bougie bar that opened up recently, and I I was, I uh, I used I was booked there for like one of those pop up parties. Oh shit! A spicy boys show. takeover. Yeah, Adam. we've done that, and we do um. They have this theater room where we hook up Super Smash, and we do five dollar buy in Super Smash tournaments at the as well. Are you good? You want the smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're trying to get Falcon punched. You're asking dude. an Asian guy if they're good at Super Smash. <laughs> <laughs> it's like asking, well, I mean, yeah. It's like asking you, are you bad at driving? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair, 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 fair. Of course. Fair, fair. Of course you're good at Super fair, Smash. Fair. Yeah, no, it's a good time, and it was funny because like I told, <laughs> sorry, I told the promoter, <laughs> I'm sorry. no, you're good, you're I'm good. Like, Fuck, we're just drinking bush lights. We're having you know? fun, we're, dude. We're having fun, <laughs> you know. Um, it was funny because I told them like how I started with tramp, like trampoline gigs, <laughs> and it was just like, welcome back. Full That's circle. awesome. Yeah, dude. it was cool. It was cool. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend that place. Not just like for shows, like just go there. I wish people time. did like more shows in places like that. So like obviously like the Bounce House and like Soul Fest. Last year I didn't play it, but like the year before it was like this. Uh, I know they moved to Florida, but it was like this like water park in yeah, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Was that was that the first year? I played the second year, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't play I the did first. The first year. No, yeah, the water park. It was sick. Like, why don't we have more places like that? But, like, no, let's do Bonner in the middle of Tennessee in the middle of August or whatever. Yeah, it sounds like 200-degree weather. Right, <laughs> right. Like, let's go to a water park. Let's go to a fucking bounce house. Let's yeah. go. What else could we do? A damn fucking it, pool hall? Isn't there – isn't Imagine – don't they have that pools – or? Imagine Fest in Atlanta, they have that... Uh, I don't know, because they've moved. Imagine Fest... Oh, they has, moved? I think they move every year, dude. Okay. Every year, I feel like they have a new location. I remember back in the day seeing videos of a 12th Planet set, and everyone's just in the water. See, that's sick. <laughs> you know, It's and, sick until you realize everyone's pissing in it, and then <laughs> you're like, oh. Well, you're not supposed to piss in the water? I mean, sure, but do you want other people's piss in the water? Yeah, dude. How else am I oh supposed to come? <laughs> um, no, and then and then no, they have home base in Florida. They have the pool parties. Yeah, and home yeah. Base. So that there's there but are again, some. I'm not jumping in that pool. Got you. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Like hang out like, fest. Zen pods floating all around <laughs> that pool. Like, oh, it's better than a tampon. Uh, but uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> But like uh, you know, like you know, like hangout fest will be on the beach. But like the first couple of years, you couldn't even get in the water. I think you can get into it now, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Chicago has some uh, like house beach events. Um, whether it's like Dirty Bird or uh, just some random like, just a bunch of big house DJs will play on the beach, and then they'll do like cruise. There's parties. a beach in Chicago. There's beaches. Okay. Yeah, it's not the prettiest. Okay. It's very polluted. I believe it. But it's lit. Okay. It's pretty lit. That's that's literally Chicago. It's not the best. It's not the cleanest. It's very polluted, but it's lit. That's it's literally lit. Chicago. And I will say if you know your way around and if you are you know, somewhat intelligent <laughs> and have some reaction, you can make the best out of it. And it's definitely definitely my favorite city. I I, I grew up thinking I can't wait to like be able to move somewhere else and then i got to see all, all a bunch of different cities and don't get me wrong like a lot of these other cities that i've visited or explored like they're great but i'll never leave chicago i and, love it and it's funny because a lot of people think i live in denver or tampa sure, I was there, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh yeah you live in tampa right it's those like, are the best two right? scenes for bass music in my opinion tampa tampa for bass music? Yes. I mean, it's lit. I, I don't think it's the best. Dude, it's it's I my mean, it's my favorite I mean, market to play. The difference between Denver bass music and Tampa is so big. It's such a big difference. I don't think Tampa... They're more ratchet in oh, Tampa. Oh, that's true. They're ratchet. And but they got like two venues. Dope venues. They are dope venues. <laughs> yeah. So TK, TK Lounge actually... Um, what's it called? One of their first kind of like return shows after like before then it wasn't it wasn't like a poppin venue and this was in the middle of pandemic when you would get in trouble for playing shows oh yeah you'd go do the shows but you wouldn't post about them right oh, so yeah, we all but, did that we but, all did that so me and Whittler got booked for it and that was like the first sold out show there ever in a while i think and after that obviously i met the staff they're all Asians and the owner's Korean. Oh yeah. And it was like, oh, we're yeah, best why, we're why, best friends now. Why else do you think there's karaoke yeah, in there? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh so after that, I we became really good friends and then they let me start doing Spicy Boys takeovers. Oh there. nice. And I was booking a lot of shows there because that was also when we did the agency. We started the agency, mm. brought all of them. And I did my own spicy voice takeovers. I would always partner up with a promoter out there. I don't like throwing the show completely on my own. Yeah. Especially if it's not my city. That's a way to piss off I, promoters, yeah. If you don't involve them, that's well, a good it, way to piss so, them off. So, yeah, I would work with them yep. too. Um, but also it's like it's nice to have a ground guy there that knows how that scene is at the same time. And then, you know, they would use my branding and then, like, my hookup with the artists that I have. But – and then they would – they would, you know, organize it in the best way that they know how it works out there. And, yeah, that 
we did a lot of that and then um eventually i started bringing rhythm there too from like chicago i, I remember booking baldy there once that was a weekend <laughs> that, that was yes a, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's yeah, all was, you have to say I, I, under, I understand yeah yeah i totally understand and then he's and then, wild yeah and then after that shortly after that they got their own talent buyer uh head bank society and then now it's it's lit. Yeah, yeah Headbang Society. Society. Yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, <laughs> there's actually a new venue that just opened in Tampa. Nice. Uh, Mad Chiller. Okay. Um, I think it's with some members of, I may be wrong, Mind Warp people. Okay. But we're doing a, one of, they just opened and they just started kind of like testing the waters. They just got their liquor license stuff and we're doing a Spicy Boys takeover there August 10th. And, it'll, and they have in-house hennies in there. It's it's and it's beautiful in there too. It's like downtown Tampa, great bar food too. They got a little arcade section with Super Smash as well. Hell yeah! Um, and it's a very like trippy and also very like cozy environment with Henny's. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> with the Henny sound. So yeah, we're gonna do a little three three sixty takeover there. It's a uh, me Molokai Jafufu. Some local support, yeah. It's gonna dude, be a good time. Dude, was uh, I remember Baldy was living in Tampa for a bit. Yeah, oh my god, no, when I booked him, <laughs> he was living there, he ended up living there. Yeah, yeah. like I checked in on him two, three weeks later like, dude, uh, I ain't for left. like payment stuff, and he's like, I'm still here. Dude, I, ain't left. I, don't, I fell in love with a Latina. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It sounds so do like right. I can't go home like I'm in love with that Latina like I can't go and I remember like Sunday night like because I got them all Airbnb for the whole weekend to just you know kick it have fun I remember looking for him like, six <laughs> you're always looking for no him. I remember 5 a.m. looking for him and he's like did he actually like go to that strip club or whatever and then like yes he did no he didn't you know where he was oh like I went I went into his room again later and he's just on the floor behind his bed just, just who knows what he was doing? And I'm like, what? You were here the whole time? He's like, dude, 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 dude. Yeah, he told me he's living in, in Tampa. He said they had to get out there. He's like, dude, I couldn't leave the strip club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, Tampa. he's the man. I gotta pause. Though. I gotta piss so bad. Okay. I'm usually good at holding it, but I gotta pause. Chug it, 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 chug it. Oh wow, bad boy, don't stop. Oh, you stopped. Done. Okay, God, you're hot. Oh, I used to be, I don't want to say like too bad because like when I compare myself to my friends at home, <laughs> it's not that bad. But that's you, a good way. To, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Oh no, yeah. But I'm not. I used to think I was bad. Then I compared myself to my father. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I, chugging like hard liquor, no chaser, you know, just going on until six a.m. I remember in high school days, Captain. Morgan, get a little closer, oh, Mike. Everyone would just drink Captain Morgan for some reason. It was cheap, I guess. Dude, but. we did this thing. Uh, it's this thing called Alabama Slammer. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> what is it, I, dude? I, you oh, tell you, me. You dude, some know. fuck. It's honestly some redneck <laughs> magic. Well, what liquor is it? It's sweet. It was it's like sweet. Yeah, it looked like Kool Aid. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of sweet liquor because then me neither, I'll, dude. I'll get a hangover. What you I, drinking, dude? What do I like to like, drink? If you're gonna sit down with like a night, sit down like, maybe not on a night out in the town, but just like a treat to yourself, you're gonna sit down and sip something. Well, I don't really drink hard liquor too much anymore, unless the energy is there. Like, you're, okay, you're at like that fest with all your homies, and it's like, all right, let's let's drink. But I tend to, I like the clear liquor. I have that Asian allergy to a lot of liquors. There's an Asian allergy. Yeah, we get red. But, and then, or even rashes, um, and then respiratory issues, depending on from what. Uh, dark liquor will do that to me. Sugary liquor, wine. Will beer do that to you? No. Oh, okay. Beer, light beers is totally fine, but but those Colorado like craft beers that are all flavored. Yeah, that, they're fucking fuck gay, dude. Out. I'm not yeah. drinking them, dude. <laughs> I'm not drinking those. Th those will do it too. Um, not every Asian has it, um, but a lot of Asians. Thirty to will fifty have percent it. of people with East Asian descent. Yeah. Um, and it's called Asian Flush or Asian yeah. Glow. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. So for some, it's not as bad. You'll just get the coloring. But for me, I'll have respiratory issues too. And like breathing will get like, it won't be like life alert, but it'll be, and it's, it's stupid. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. I didn't know there was an Asian allergy. I mean, you just stick to like what works, like tequila, like light liquor or clear liquor, vodka, tequila, and. It's crazy because I can still 
I know I said I don't like really drink anymore, but I guess the it's not muscle memory, I guess. But like I can, I can chug, I can chug vodka or tequila without with like water or nothing. And it's like, all right, you don't need nothing, dude. That's yeah. some. But I, shit. I usually like to stick to beers. I'm also not like drinking, um, on just like by myself. There's got to be like people over, and you know they bring the beers, and it's like all right, let's say you are drinking it. by yourself. No. no, no, I don't drink by myself. <laughs> Wait, what do, you, what, do, what do you mean? Is it bad? <laughs> what do you mean, is it bad? Is it bad to drink by yourself? No, no, definitely not. I'm not saying I never do. Like, some days I'll be like, all right, fuck it, let's have a beer and crack open Ableton, but... Yeah. Um, Mitch is like, oh, shit, it's, it's, am I an alcoholic? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much are you drinking, man? <laughs> not a lot. Like, you know, probably like I mean, four. are you blacking out? No, 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 then, no, no. then what? I can't tell you the last time yeah. I blacked out. Um, I'm not an irresponsible drinker. I just love bourbon. No, I I love beer. I love beer. It's nice, especially like with a meal too. Like if you go out with your friends and you're you're at a restaurant, spicy like, things with beer is the best. Yeah, I like mean, crawfish. Yeah. Oh, Oof. I'm about to go to New Orleans on Saturday. Let's go, boy. <laughs> what month is it right now? What is July, it? We're July. July. You could get some crawfish. You can get it. It's, it's towards the end of the season, but you can do it. And well, if what's you, what's like your spot for crawfish? Oh, uh, we used to have this thing called the uh, Asian Cajun. Uh, no, that's here. That's here. <laughs> that's here. You guys get crawfish out here? Uh, don't do it. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, say, yeah, don't do it. Um, there's an. I went to an Asian Cajun here to get a po' boy because I was really missing home. But um, I had this place, Asian Persuasion, not Asian Cajun. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Internet's gonna have my ass, Kevin. <laughs> hey man, it, I, I'll, I'll say if they haven't had your ass yet, I think you're good. <laughs> I got big dick, dude. Yeah, if they, yeah, you've already taken the big dick. Like nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna point, hurt you at this. At point. this point, we're good. Yeah. Uh, no, there's this place, uh, Cajun Persuasion, that was not too far from my house. But if you're going downtown, man, I mean, like you can't, you can't miss on a lot of good food. Yeah, you I really mean, can't I, miss. I, I always gain like five pounds every time in New Orleans. I lost was it seven or eight pounds the first month I moved out here. <laughs> Moving out of New yeah, I didn't do anything different. Just like changed my. I just didn't. Eat, I wasn't eating crawfish. I wasn't eating you know, all that butter and those oh, flavors. Oh, oh god. So oh fuck. Yeah. fuck. <laughs> my mouth's getting wet. Yeah. Dude. Fuck. Damn. Well, yeah. we did. Uh, we did have some fan questions. Actually, before we get into the fan questions, man, I know you. Uh, you sent me your side project you're starting. Yeah. Up, and you mentioned it earlier, and uh, I know you wanted to talk about it, dude. It's. Very different from miso. Yeah, it's yeah. very different. Um, it's different because, well, one, the it's called two player, and we want to replicate the vibes of playing like a fantasy anime MMORPG. We want the listeners to feel like, okay, we just started up our PS4 or whatever, and then you're in that loading screen, and then you enter that fantasy like just the first level. You know, just open world, just complete diving into this RPG. Um, so also, uh, it's with Jeff Fufu, and we are both integrating um, not just our own, like, styles that we've been making, but also styles that we love to listen to. And we are just meshing all those things, everything we love. Um, and it's definitely... Um, it's definitely like something that like it's the stuff that I've always like we both always wanted to be able to create. We just back in the day we weren't we weren't able to. We just didn't have the knowledge or you know technical skills. But because um, this idea was something we've been talking about for like almost two years now, and we've just kind of been doing our own growth and just obviously we've had collabs before here and there. Um, we we do sync and get along together very well, which is so over the two years we just kept brainstorming, brainstorming, and uh, just sharing too. And then um, I was like, "All right, Jeff, month of July, you're you're coming over for the whole month." And then he's actually going to land here tonight, and he's playing Badger as well for the Spicy Boys Takeover. We're going to debut some of those tracks for the first time live. Um, but yeah, we're it's something. We're super excited about, especially because, again, it's like this is what 
we've always been wanting to create. And now we're both at this, we've both grown enough to be able to do our part in it. Cause you know, he'll, I fell in love with his melodic and um, future bassy side. And also his sound selection is a lot of uh, like futuristic Neo Tokyo cyberpunk vibes. So that's a lot of pronouns on that fucking <laughs> <laughs> no, on that like, description. That's literally a lot of his music. It's like a mix of future bass, melodic dubstep, and then you'll hear the future like Tokyo type sound selection. Mm-hmm. Right? And then you know we. But I, I honestly, I understand it. Like yeah. you pointed out, I'm like that, that, that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and then just coming together, and um, the first week or two, we kind of had to <clears throat> learn each other's workflows and stuff, and then find that middle ground of those workflows to make sure these workflows aren't clashing and then after that dude it's just been such a great experience because like not only are we both creating something together that we won't be able to create on our own and it's like it's like when you play co-op with a friend on some game and then you guys are just crushing it like just on an exponential level and at the same time you're learning Mm. off of each other yeah on his style and then my style and it's like it, it's been great a lot of video game references oh it yeah makes me so, excited i mean yeah. like i listened to it and i was like this is very different whenever we we're talking about his melodic style i was like yeah this is definitely yeah, yeah thank we, you for sending that to me too oh it's yeah fucking awesome oh yeah we we're really excited about it we can't wait to like actually finish it and get it out there um, you're gonna pitch it to any games so actually yes uh maybe not any specific games but i've gotten um some help from just other industry people and um we've gotten a sync licensing connect so we're hoping to you know either send that or create something for just that sync licensing world because honestly that's where the money is at (laughs) there's some money in it dude because i i I remember a long time ago me and revlo made this dubstep track and we, we both hated it so we threw it out and then he got hit up by Fortnite and was like, Kevin, you want to sell of this track? And they paid us 15 k <laughs> Dude, me and Revlo almost had a track signed by fucking Fast and Furious. <laughs> That's crazy. Actually, yeah, me and Jeff almost got, um, it's our, it's our collab, uh, Neon Arcade. It's a very, like, Neo Tokyo, like, melodic track. It was, we were planning on getting it onto this Netflix series. Uh, like a cyberpunk Netflix series, but it never it never came out. I think they canceled it. But they were it was Damn, like that a been dope. Yeah, it was like a thirty k upfront pay with then royalties on top of that. But I had some buddies who have gotten some songs on some commercials. Who have after that bought a house? <laughs> yeah. can, you no, know what I mean. The money's there. There's some money the, there. Uh, do you know Lick? Yeah, I've heard Lick. of Lick. Uh, when the pandemic first started, he he made the opening, just techno loop for a Valorant. They paid him, I think, seventy k or something. Jesus. And he was just living off that during the pandemic. Jesus. Yeah, for it was it's like a thirty second. Dum, 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 dum. What are we doing? Trying to play? <laughs> yeah, right. What are what, we, why are hey, we? Tra- we're chasing our dreams. I, I, yeah, how but I see why? It. We're we're still young. <laughs> we're still young. We're trying to see how far we can go, and then if we don't get as far, then we can. I feel like. People like us can easily dive into that world, you know, with the quality of music that we're yeah, able just, to create. I'm, just, I'm like, giving them songs about eating ass. Yeah, because you can just make <laughs> you can make ten like fifteen second loops and they'll pay. They'll be like, yeah, oh, we're paying. You know what? That money's about to be gone though. You know what I mean? We're not actually. I feel like we're about to, actually not about to be getting that money because mm-hmm. AI. They can create those exact That's, loops that they're looking for. Okay, I guess. Wait, let me pause. Brad, is there any way you could go grab us some more of these? Continue, please. I'm sorry. I need another. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Just grab as many as you can, please. That you're thank you. I love you. I just met him. Yes, you do <laughs> you have a point on the AI thing, but at the same time, um there's these innovative individuals that are utilizing the AI and then using that to their benefit where they create you know, just whatever they create, but they have the help of AI to advance them in on a whole nother level. And like, for example, with AI, I've been able to like take 
acapellas out of my favorite hip hop songs. I do it too. Right. And back in the day, like, good luck doing that. You, yeah. How are you going to do that back in the day? You just get lucky and find like a studio acapella every now and then, or yeah. like somebody did their own in it. But it'd all terrible. be from like the 80s or something. Let me get them videos. And, um, but what I'm saying is, is like, why would a movie pay an artist, say, let's say like $50,000 for like a certain thing that they want exactly when they could just type it in? Now, now that's not like, that's, that's just one example. There are other songs and like they want to get a hot song from a hot producer. I remember like that one movie trailer had like G Jones, it's all in your head or something like that. It was like that was like the song of the movie trailer, and I was like, "Good on him. He probably made a lick." Yeah, but I mean, I feel like at least right now AI is not perfect in terms of creating those songs. Hey, neither at are least. we. That's true. Neither are we. But, hold, but, hold my hand. But our <laughs> Im- but but our imperfection in what we create has that humanism and and that emotion in it. Yeah. Unless it's just like complete shit. <laughs> yeah. Whenever AI does it, it just sounds. <laughs> if you heard those uh, SpongeBob raps, the yes, AI SpongeBob dude. Raps. <laughs> yeah, my favorite, my favorite ones to watch lately of the AI, like, <laughs> like they call them deep fakes. Are those what they're called? Yeah. Okay, the AI deep fakes was. Uh, did you see the one of like Biden announcing that he wasn't running and he's just talking shit? <laughs> no, he's just great. He's just talking shit, dude. Yo. Kyle, can you find this clip and play it for us? We'll have to cut this out. <laughs> yeah. I know I saw it on I saw it on X and it is fucking hilarious. Um, after that whole Trump assassination attempt went down, there's been these AI replications of like Japanese anime style. Dude, <laughs> I saw that too. And he's just like nutty. And he like stops the bullet with Dude, his head. <laughs> so, that one was so awesome. That one was so awesome. That's like one of the like, there are a, many many. Many positives of AI, yeah. and this is one of them. Yeah. Entertainment oh, yeah. and quick, like yeah. the turnaround quick. is how quick. quick it was. Yeah, yeah. it was literally. Here, here we go. Is this it? Is this it? I want to speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. This isn't it. And remember, when we may disagree, it, no, this ain't we it. Must stand together. This ain't it. This okay. ain't it. So it's an That's AI it. video. I saw it on X. So you might want to go needed. go on Twitter, and it's uh, literally <laughs> Biden. <laughs> Fucking saying that he's dropping out. Just look up Biden AI video, right. and it's it's gonna make you lose it. Let's see if we can find it. Good old AI. It's fun. It is fun. That's it. That's fucking it. To address some of the hateful shit you've been talking about, <laughs> many of you have said I am suffering from brain worms, or that I have applesauce for brains. Well. <laughs> I won't miss words, so here it is. Fuck you. You're all a bunch of f- End of quote. Repeat the line. So End enjoy quote, President Cackles line. or President Booty Juice. I really don't give two fucks anymore. Biden out. My fellow <laughs> that's Americans. That's it. That's it. Biden out. Biden out. <laughs> <laughs> that's where AI gets fucking fun, man. AI. Good hey, old AI. Good, AI. I'm, good old AI. Hey, dude, we have to adapt. <laughs> no, that's true. 100%. And it's... I mean, you, I'm sure you've been seeing all the the debate with graphic designers and AIs. Yeah, and it's but kind that, of stupid in my opinion. I get it for both angles. Because it was like, all right, here's, 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 here's my take on it real quick. So they're like calling out artists who are using AI to create art. And, and I saw Alinium had did it. And that's, yes, call him out. He's getting millions of dollars a show. Was it a complete copy and paste? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it was fucking booty juice and... Like it sucked? It sucked. Okay. And it's like people, <laughs> people called him out for it and they're like, this is obviously AI. And it's like, oh, yeah, they should call him out. This dude's getting millions of dollars. They right. should not be fucking cutting corners like that. And making it suck. And making it suck. If you're going to cut corners, at least make it look dope. But like... I get it because there's graphic designers who are going to be out of work. That I hate because it's like they need jobs too. They're very important to everything in the scene. But at the same time, like there's also like I've paid a thousand dollars for artwork that yeah. was fucking awful. Yeah, and was not what I wanted. Right. And I, and there was another time where I paid money to an artist that I think used fucking AI. Right. 
I'm pretty positive they used AI to create that. But artwork. did they like do anything after that? I it, the art sucked, but oh. I still paid money for it. <laughs> right. I pay for a lot of art that I'm not happy with. Yeah. So that's just all I'm trying to get at. <laughs> and so, how awesome would it be for me to not pay a lot of money for artwork that I'm not happy with to pay to pay nothing and right. maybe get something that I'm okay with? But also, to add to that, I've come across a lot of graphic artists where they again start with AI. And use that either as inspiration or they make, they take that and then do their own touches to it. It's kind of like when we sample something or yeah. make a flip out of something and we make it, you know, you make it a taboo track still like out of that flip or whatever. So at first when that whole controversy came, I was like, damn, that's really shitty. But also I started meeting artists that are taking that and still creating their own art out of it. And it's phenomenal. I think and you should use whatever tool you have to create yeah. something good. Because um, I don't want to pay you for something bad. I mean, not only that, but also it's like this is what times are. And, you know, not just with EDM or the industry. Like, the whole world is constantly always changing, whether it's economically or just politically. And, you know, and then there's wars that happen here and there. That shit changes the world. I mean, COVID changed the world. You know, in so many different aspects. And it's uh, if you didn't adapt, you're, you know, you're fucked. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like it's harsh reality in a way, survival of the fittest type shit. But also, I feel like anyone that really sat down, like sits down and it's like, all right, this is, these are the changes that are happening. How can I not only adapt, but take these change like, changes to our advantage because i remember before tiktok was a thing for our industry like what was it just soundcloud like you just upload on soundcloud and that was that yeah. was it yeah that was that it. was it but now it's like oh you want to you want to go play those big fests like tiktok is a great shortcut and i'm not saying it's like shitty to do like it works I got you know. kicked off twice. You got kicked off TikTok? Twice. <laughs> twice? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not on it. I'm not on it. No, I'm not on it either. I mean, um, I know, like, my stuff is on it, but right. I am personally not on yeah. it. Yeah. And I kicked off twice. Uh, are you familiar with chart metrics? No. Oh. Can you pull up chartmetrics.com? Um, you, you will have to make an account with an email. It's really quick, though. It's the Pokédex of artists. It literally shows your ranking as an artist, and this is from all genres. I think number one artist right now is Taylor Swift. So it takes yeah. it takes a lot of. I don't know if I want to know this. <laughs> it takes a. It might no, hurt my ego. I think you're up there. It, it takes it takes a lot of uh, statistics from every social media, um, not just your Spotify and SoundCloud, but from Instagram to TikTok. It'll show you because I don't make TikToks, but it'll show me that. Your song has been played this many times or used on TikTok. And it'll take all these statistics. And it'll show you ra your overall ranking and then also rankings within genres. And a lot of promoters and talent buyers are now using this tool, this website. To book. To book and see how much they're going to offer you. Really? Because I, I don't know if that translates the same. Because, I, I, I mean, I know a lot of people who kill it online but can't sell tickets. There's definitely that too, but if it's a great, it's a good starting point. Yeah, if I they mean, if they've never booked you before, or especially, I'm nervous about this. Yeah, just type in any artist. I feel like I I live. I, you don't want to see yours. <laughs> I do better. <laughs> He's doing it. He's doing it. Fuck it. I I do better in life whenever. <laughs> Legendary superstar, mainstream, mid-level. Yeah, there's that too. Explosive no growth. Oh, nobody is legendary. Nobody is legendary. Oh, dude, I'm a fucking legendary <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh card or yeah, Pokemon like card. Superstar level is like Taylor Swift, Weekend, like. Marshall. So I'm legendary. So no, <laughs> so these are the uh, these are the stages, right? Yeah. Right now, there's developing, mid-level, yeah. mainstream, superstar, legendary. Right now, you're developing. You have growth. You're emerging, emerging. And if emerging in social engagement to, it'll show all like it'll it has so much info and this wow. is this is the free account once you pay for it it goes it goes deep very deep damn yeah and then there'll be if you scroll down more i think there'll be like instagram 
to TikTok and like every oh, yeah. yeah, it has so much information. And it's honestly great because then you can like focus on the areas that are low. I wonder what this little spike here was here <laughs> last year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I wonder what that spike was last year. No, it's literally the Pokédex of the music industry. It's funny how yeah. the spike was up. Anyway, um... <laughs> Damn, that's wild. What's it called? Chart metrics. Fuck me. At least yeah. everything was was green. Like everything seemed like it was on yeah. the way up. No, uh, most artists. Um, I mean, there's artists that aren't ranked. When if you're not, I forgot what number what it was. Am I ranked, Cal? Yeah, yeah. You're like eighty eighty thousand. Um, ninety one thousand seven hundred seven. That's cool. out of what? Out Every of the whole world. Artist in the world. Out of the whole world. I'll take it. Yeah, no, and it, I think, I forgot what number it was. I don't know if it was million or, like, 500K. If you're not within that number, it doesn't even show a ranking. You're not, there's no information. Dude, so the I'm, fact that you are ranked. I'm is, top 91, thou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 That's hysterical. It's Damn, Pokemon. I'm going to have to, that's going to haunt my dreams now. Damn it. No, you, Kevin. you can't let it haunt you. You got to use it. To, to assess me. and to see, assassinate people, yeah, that too, maybe, but <laughs> to assess which areas that are like low because it'll show like the rankings and uh, levels of like so many different categories, and then you can focus on those categories, and then your ranking overall ranking will go up. And then promoters and talent buyers that may have never booked you Damn. before will be able to see that and be like, All right, let's this is scary. <laughs> Why is it scary? It's like a digital currency for artists. Yeah. It's, it's fucking terrifying. It's the world market. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just really wild to me. What about like someone like uh like like uh Billy Strings or like, you know, people like that that ain't online but like selling out every fucking show that they do? Let's see, we're falling they, they, in No, they have that. a top hundred list on there. It's on the it's on the left. There's like Sidebars, there's like a top ten. Yeah, pull it out. What, what band did you, pick? Did you say? Fallen in Reverse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the internet hates charts. them, but they're playing at Reina's. Charts on the left side, you said. Yeah. Oh, I see it here. This is fucking interesting. Uh, of course, it's, no, yeah, it's T crazy. Swift is definitely yeah, Taylor number Swift one. Is number one. Wow. <laughs> and she should be. Okay, but it's crazy. so these are all so Have Sabrina you, Carpenter, Tyler the Creator, Arctic Monkeys, Chappelle Roan. Post Malone, Vincent Boone, Taylor Swift, Billie <laughs> Eilish. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy because none of them will say superstar either. So How who the fuck is a – who the fuck hey. – or legendary. Sorry, legendary. Yeah. It's like, so who the fuck is legendary? How old is Billie Eilish? <laughs> uh, yeah, see, it's, it's just – they're all superstars. Yeah, Nobody superstar. has the legendary status. How, How old is Billie Eilish? Uh, Can you look that up real quick for me? Because, I mean, she's up there already. 22? Dude, Billie Eilish has got some fat She's tits. She's 22? <laughs> God damn. What am I doing with my life? I had to, had to get that. How old is she? <laughs> I had to get that first. Jesus. <laughs> I know it was only for comedic effect, but it's... You better hope she doesn't see this, because she, so she, hates, she hates when... Apparently, she hates when people <laughs> objectify her oh get over it oh, bitch no, you're specifically famous specifically about her about her i better knockers yeah. okay <laughs> i think that's a superpower she should embrace it right <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> now breasts of all size <laughs> superpower <laughs> honestly the only tits i love are my girlfriends i'm gonna throw that out there smart guy so <laughs> uh let's get some fan questions though <laughs> These bushes, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, she does have some fucking. I really don't get too fucking. <laughs> she does. Oh, oh. Oh, we, oh, I saw the Biden one. These are actual phone recordings of the questions. Yeah, yeah, the oh. hotline. People call in and uh, leave questions. Oh, shit. I think we had some while we were doing this, but I won't have ch a chance to go check them, so I don't know if they're shit. All right. <laughs> Most of them are shit, so I have to go through them. Like what? What? What do you? What do you say is a shit question? Someone called a day, ha ha, fuck you, Mitch, ha ha, and then hung up. That's not a question. I know. <laughs> That's why I have to go through them. 
<laughs> but, but I think that'd be great content. <laughs> oh, should we cut this? Uh, I don't want him to think that, like, oh, I'm on the podcast. Cool. I'm going to keep doing it. Like, fucking spiral and just. I get like, it. But, hey, buddy, quit calling. Yeah. <laughs> please. Like, I, 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 like, I, like. Get help. Please get help. We well, can't. We don't have the help you need. And also, I don't care about a lot of the shit you're calling me about. Yeah, we only got bush lights here. <laughs> we don't got the help. For bush, you. We got bush lights and fucking low attention spans, dude. Yeah. Fucking. And if, and if the liquor ain't gonna help you, this ain't the place. <laughs> yeah, dude. What if I was your therapist? Fuck. Uh, I mean, the, uh, I'm d- it they, really depends on the person, man. They just tell. They tell me their problems. I'm like, yeah. Like, I, I get that, I but Billy Idis has fat tits. I guess if somebody <laughs> was just like their main problem was just they're lonely, I think yeah. you, you would you would work out. Just give them some bush lights and just talk about big sports tits. and big tits, dude. <laughs> sport, dude. A cold beer, sports and big tits that will cure any guys. Like if any dude out there is having problems, if he, I'm serious, bro. I think that can solve 90% oh, yeah. of men's like issues. Like he just got dumped or something. And then, dude, yeah. all he needs is like a bull, bo- like one of the boys, cold beer, uh, something hey. would do with sports. No, honestly, and yeah. fat tits, even like not in you, but even just talking right. about it makes you feel good. As long as the issue isn't like severely like mental, I think. Yeah, it's, a, I, it's I great. disagree. It's great therapy. I disagree. disagree? I think even men- severe mental, <laughs> mental shit, <laughs> like schizophrenic mental shit. You Dude, think yeah, you could I, help that with big tits in a bush <laughs> and a nice like, game of football with the boys. <laughs> and I'm only talking about men. I'm not talking about women. I don't know what the fuck y'all need. Right. I try. <laughs> who, who All we do is try, and we just never get that's it right. True. Who we knew can that only the... try, man? And that's that's what matters. All we do is try. Yeah. Who knew that the solution to the homeless problem was just having a catch and drinking some beers? All right, well, I mean, it's not going to give you a home. I'm just saying it's going to put you in a better mood. It's going to fucking cheer your day up. A cold beer and a nice fucking football game with the boys, and you all talk about fat tits. That's, dude, I don't, and I'll take that any day of the week, brother. Oh, no, I, I definitely agree with you, like, especially if you just had a long, stressful, like, work week. You're able to come home and just kick it like that with your boys. I, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Dude, all we need yeah. is each other. And it's crazy because... All we need is it, each other. It, we got we to gotta consider that as a blessing because not everyone has those boys in their life. That's true. Yeah. We all need boys in our lives. <laughs> Bring on the boys. Let's get a question. <laughs> It's raining, man. Wow. Hello, boys. This is Hold on, hold on. That could not have been a better timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Fuck. That could not be better timing. Jesus. <laughs> All right, I'm going to. All right. I'm All right, boys. Let's go. Run it. Let's run it back. Hello, boys. This is Dustin, a.k.a. Jesus, uh, calling from Wisconsin here. And my question for the both of you guys today is, what was the worst job you had growing up? <laughs> uh, what was the job maybe when you did when you were younger um, that you didn't love or you had a boss that you just hated? And um, even if maybe, let's say, you didn't have like too many like horrible jobs growing up, what do you think would be like, the worst everyday job that regular people have who aren't awesome kick-ass DJs uh, that you would just hate doing. Uh, yeah, that's my question. And uh, you can talk about Wisconsin and spinning pillows if you want. Otherwise, uh, love you guys. Have a good time and talk to you soon. Jesus Christ out. Love you, Jesus. You want to go first or should I go first? Uh, I can go first if you'd like. Sure. Yeah, dude, my fucking the worst job I ever did. I did truck bed liners uh, for a summer in Baton the Rouge. Fuck is that? <laughs> so you know, like uh, the bed of trucks, like that, yeah. like black kind of like it almost feels rubbery. Mm-hmm. I was uh, spraying spray. It's like a chemical spray, but I was spraying truck bed liners uh, for a summer in Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, bro, we worked at this fucking warehouse so it's my buddy he wanted to start a company because like we we had a friend in mississippi start one of those companies got rich off of it and he was just trying to look for a quick buck but he didn't fucking know shit about bedliners he was like i need an employee i was like i need some money so i did it 
And, bro, we would be in this warehouse with no AC in the Louisiana summer, like dead of summer, not knowing dick about truck bed liners. <laughs> don't, we don't know a fucking thing about them. Everything's always not working. Everything's breaking. We don't know how to fix it because we don't know this equipment. Yeah. And so, like, dude, we would be in a warehouse for, like, 12, 13 hours in the middle of summer and maybe would spray one truck when we should have been able to do one, like, every 45 minutes. And, dude, we had a we had a car dealership that was like, yeah, well, you can spray all of our trucks. So it's like a gold mine if we could just do right. it and we could never do it. And, like, also, so this warehouse was in the hood, so we'd come to work the next day. So much shit stolen. So much shit. So, some guy took a dump in the warehouse just on the floor. <laughs> that fucking happened. And also, <laughs> that sucked. I had to clean that up. Um, fucking, um, and you had to, like, we had to wear, like, the either, like, long sleeve shirts or, like, hazmat suits in the middle of, I can't even, like, ex- ex- express this enough, the middle of the summer in Louisiana, which is not fun. And the reason you have to do that is because moisture, like water or sweat, if that gets on the truck before you spread the bed liner, that shit's coming up because moisture is like the worst thing that could happen for bed lining. And we're also in like the most humid place. So yeah. that's, dude, it was just not good. We we never were able to work right. Uh, we would sweat <laughs> all day. Shit was stolen. Um, it sucked. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the worst job I ever had. I was just a struggling producer and DJ. I needed a couple extra bucks. And uh, you know what? I'm glad I did it because I was able to go buy myself a pair of shoes. And there I, need, you go. I, needed a, I needed some new shoes. Some shoes. I needed some shoes, bro. Yeah. Shoes are important. They are. <laughs> yeah. Um, For me, well, <clears throat> it seems like from talking to other peers, I feel like a lot of people hate working. I've never worked retail, though. Um, But in high school, I've definitely switched out on a lot of different part-time jobs because there wasn't really a part-time job where it's like, yeah, I love this shit, you know? It's like, but I I remember working for telemarketing during high school. They would recruit high schoolers because they can just pay you $9, $10 an hour. And the work was you memorize this bullshit script about how their current car you call a list of customers and you and it's it shows like what car they own and then you tell them like oh you qualify for like an upgrade but really there's no upgrade you're stealing money from them no you convince them that they're going to get an upgrade and then you link them with the dealership and then the dealership takes over but you got to convince them like hey you qualify for this upgrade and like if they start asking questions, it's like, you don't even know what, what to say to them. It's like, why do you get this upgrade? It's like, you just, it's just complete bullshit. Damn. So, and it's like that for hours. I mean, it was cool because the only thing cool is like they let you vape and like <laughs> take like weed breaks. Dude, you're getting like in weird places that let you vape, <laughs> like jail, like yeah. your job. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's just, it's, uh, it gets mentally draining just constantly doing the same bullshit script to people. And then knowing that you're pretty much scamming them. <laughs> and it's on fucked. top of that, it's like, because you're a high schooler, you don't get commission or nothing. Mm. It's just straight $10. Straight, it was straight $10 an hour. A lot of people kind of like would work for a month and quit because it's like, it's just draining. I mean, I guess it's cool because you're not like doing physical labor or something. But like, I don't know, mentally, <laughs> it's, it, it's it sucks because you're just... All right. Scamming people. Next phone. And yeah, that sounds terrible. You gotta just bullshit. It's cold calls. Yeah, and then I also did, I also did kind of the same thing, but with roofing insurance, where you knock on people's doors and say, "Yeah, there was a hailstorm here last winter, so you qualify for a free like roofing change." But really, it's not free. It's not fucking free. And <laughs> Nothing you gotta, is. You got to convince them that it's free somehow. <laughs> and then obviously, then then the rest take over, but it sucks because you don't get paid unless they actually go through with that with the actual roofing company after you bullshit them, and then they gotta actually <laughs> go through it. Um, it's good money when they go through it, but it's also like just knocking on every door and then just bullshitting them because immediately they just want to slam the door on your face. <laughs> and then you gotta be like, ah, you gotta talk to them. 
And if you're just like tired or stressed, like you don't want, <laughs> you don't want to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else have I worked? I've worked at also a Korean barbecue restaurant before. Oh, I did a lot of Korean barbecue so much. Yeah, dude. but ha- work at a Korean barbecue one where all the customers are demanding Koreans. <laughs> it's hard. Oh, and they're they, demanding, aren't they? Because all the side dishes are free to and unlimited, and they just like. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, as long as they are, haven't yelled at you, they do. You do get fat tips, but at the same time, it's like it's extra service. All right, so the, uh, I gotta interrupt you. Yeah, go ahead. It might be ignorant. Do Koreans yell a lot? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. I, just, well, I thought so, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. So, like in restaurants in Korea. And I think it's the same with other Asian countries too. Like your customer at a, some Asian restaurant, like out here, it's like you kind of like wait for the server or waiter to like make eye contact with you for them to like, okay, I need, I need something. No, in Korea, it's like, hey, bring this shit over here. Can you say <laughs> no. that in Korean for me so I can just get an idea? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to feel it. I want to feel the pressure. I'm, I'm a server. Let's, let's play this out. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a server and I'm like nervous. It's my like first day on the job. I'm not on top of my game. Go. Like okay, so a lot of Korean restaurants. Um, Damn it! Is I will I'll okay, get to okay, it. Okay, okay. Um, we need this pre context though. Gotcha, so a lot okay. of Korean restaurants, uh, especially Korean barbecue restaurants in Korea, is twenty four seven. People go there to get hammered. So it's tight. Yeah, constantly. It's they're gonna be asking for more soju or beer. So they'll be like. They'll just be like, they won't even say like the name of the waiter. They'll be like, they'll just grunt like, hey, they're like, can we role play now? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay here we go. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> all right, try to try, try, try to keep safe. Face. Like, what am I? What am I gonna call you? Any dude, you can say anything. I'm okay. not gonna understand. Well, they'll just say, okay. <laughs> all right, no, we're role playing, dude. Not all right, we're ready. Ready. Right. This is a real life scenario. Jogio, soju hagido. Hi. That, just like that. <laughs> just like that. Oh. And then they'll have to they'll have to bring it like I feel within, like we I feel like within, we can go harder. I feel like we can go harder. 20 seconds or it's just like they just keep yelling at you. All right, I feel like we can that's, go harder. Let me make sure these are empties. All right. I want to I want to have fun with this. Come on. <laughs> what do you mean go harder? <laughs> I want you to be like a legit Never Okay, mind. so so I'm drunk at the <laughs> restaurant. You're the server. Yeah. I was like Joke out. So drunk it up. Pali pali. Yeah, and then, and, then, you, and then what would you do? You what would that, you do? What would you do at that point? Oh, I mean, me personally, not you, not you. Right? They they will probably get up, fucking grab you, and <laughs> maybe I'm hit, wanting to role play so maybe bad right hit now. you, maybe hit you. Damn it, we could we could have done all this, Kevin. <laughs> you could have hit me right here now, <laughs> and I'd have been like, this is part of the bit. But uh, yeah, it'd be like that, and that's just like standard, standard. I mean, Koreans are constantly yelling. <laughs> it's fun though. Keeps you on your toes. Oh yeah, I do appreciate that. That's fun. I mean, you won't really catch Korean Amer- Koreans in America doing that. Too. Yeah, non Koreans. I was a. Uh, it's I, definitely like in the country thing. I know it's I know it's different, but I was like I was dating this Vietnamese gal for a bit, and like her fucking like dad was just like, yeah, like <laughs> and just yep. at it, and I was like, all right, yeah, this is this is different. And it's great, but also not great because the older Asian people, they'll lose their filter. Like, and I, I miss that. What do you mean? When people have no filter. <laughs> I don't want a filter. Yeah, but what if they make you f- – they just target your insecurities Good. and they make you feel sh- – Do <laughs> like it. Terrible. Do it. Dude, pressure no, makes diamonds, no, dude. Like, Put um, me in the dirt. Like your own grandmother will literally see like that you gained weight or something or that you – breaking out and just be uh, like what the fuck is that oh uh, my granddad used to call me the f-word all the time <laughs> you know <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about him r.i.p no it's like it's like you haven't seen your family in months and then you go see them and the first thing they say they scream at you is like how ugly you are <laughs> instead of like i it's been so long i haven't seen you no it's fucking you look like shit motherfucker. <laughs> and there's like and then you can't you can't you just gotta take it. You, you just gotta, gotta take that big dick. They big dick, you, you bro. Take that big dick and say you love them, dude. Yeah, bow, you gotta bow to them. <laughs> it sounds a lot, a lot like poor white families too. Yes, it does, <laughs> man. God damn. 
Yeah, man. My fucking uh never mind. But um <laughs> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but you know what, dude? Those old people, they earn that. <laughs> You've lived a life. In a way. That's my yeah. favorite my favorite thing is old people and no filter. Dude, my dad's yeah. gotten to that point. <laughs> Especially because they'll they'll say how they'll scream at how ugly you are and then give you like a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's they'll not a poor white thing. That's not, thing that's for not sure. my dad for sure. <laughs> oh, I time yeah. I saw my dad, he's like, "You've been gaining weight, son." I'm like, "Fuck you, dude! I play a lot of basketball. I'm lifting weights. Yeah, I'm, I'm gaining muscle." Oh yeah, a lot. But now he called me fat, dude. <laughs> Fucking piece of shit. Oh yeah, the the f- <laughs> calling people fat is so common in Asia. Yeah, especially because like. The norm is to be super, super skinny. Yeah. In Asia. And like the size comparison is different. I'm not saying it's like that's what it should be, but it's just like it's just how it's just how they're shaped and what they're what they consider the norm. So it's like that's a healthy even way. if you're I not was, even overweight, they'll be like, You're fucking fat. Uh, <laughs> everyone's just bulimic. <laughs> We we figured out why Asians are skinnier, dude. It's just because y'all dog each other. No, it said they're all I, bulimic. I I don't really I don't know if bul- bulimia is common because like they be eating, they be eating constantly. Especially because in Asia, so many like fire restaurants are always twenty four seven. It's just people are getting drunk and eating great food. Damn, I all go. the fucking time. But it happens like. Not all the food in Asia happens to be like trans fats and like processed, so it's like you won't gain as much weight as if you ate the same amount of food out in America, like from fast food or whatever the fuck's open at late at night. <laughs> the only fats in Asian food is either from curry, like barbecue, like from the meat, or like street, like fried food, like shrimp tempura, or like <sighs> just like deep fried shit. But that's really not that some common. Of my favorite shit though. What? Tempura is some of my favorite shit. Tempura's fire, man. It's so good. Um, yeah, I bought. I recently bought this thing from Timu, like this Chinese company that sells everything for a dollar, like this tiny little deep fryer. And it's just like, it's so fun because you just want to deep fry everything and make tempura out of everything. Yeah, it's it's, it's great. During the uh, <laughs> pandemic, I learned how to do tempura, and I was just like making sushi. Yeah. That was like a fun oh, thing. Oh, making sushi is so much fun. It is a good time. Getting the, the rice is the hardest part. Like getting the rice right. You just need a rice cooker, bro. Don't boil it. You Water can, you, up to the first knuckle, right? You'll never get it right if you're boiling the rice. You just I'll never get anything cooker. right, dude, but all I can do is continue to try. You got to try. Yeah, that's what matters, <laughs> man. That's what. That's all that matters, dude. Let's get to this next question. I think it's the uh, last one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Hello, boys. This is for me, so... Um... I'm just wondering if you would rather fight a hundred chicken-sized bears or a hundred bear-sized chickens. That's all. Oh my god! Wow. So a hundred <laughs> chicken-sized so like, bears, hundred baby bears, or a hundred giant chickens. Yeah. Probably the 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 baby bears. What are they gonna do? Yeah, I'll, I've only I've always wanted to just stomp babies, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've been on too many planes with crying babies. Oh, uh, dude! <laughs> no, def- or, but, definitely the baby bears, because like a giant chicken, like you know when they do their fucking kicking. Imagine a giant chicken like kicking. You. You get fucked. Well, the only and there's a wa- hundred of them. Yeah, the only way I'd want to say a hundred bear sized chickens is because boy, we gonna be eaten. You know what I mean? I mean, you bear bears aren't that good. You've tried bear? Yeah, they're not that great. Where it's have and you, you have tried to bear, huh? Where have you tried bear? Oh, many, many times. It's like hunting. Yeah, I mean, I haven't hunted a bear, but I, I'm friends with a lot of <laughs> fucking wild rednecks. So like, who do like kind of extravagant and they eat hunts? Bear? Yeah, dude, bears have actually uh, the bear fat's a delicacy. Really? Oh, uh, extreme delicacy. But like, um, like bear, you have to cook like, like you have to cook it well done, or else you can get trigonosis. Um, it's trigonosis. Oh, it's like a parasite that lives inside of a lot of the bear oh, meat and fun. bear fat, and it'll fuck you up. It's kind of like a, you know, like when you go to Mexico and drink the water. It's kind of like that. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> oh, I, I've done, I, I did that, but um, mistakenly so. But um, it's kind of like that, but like you can get a lot more sick, and it's a little bit more severe. So like with bear, bear can still be delicious, especially if you cook in the bear fat. Black bear is delicious because a lot of black bears are eating a lot of like berries and like like f- like wild fruit. So like sometimes you can get a bear, and the fat's almost like purple because of all the bear uh, berries they've been eating. So they're kind of sweet. So they're deli- like the fat's amazing. But um, but like I said, the uh, meat you have to r- cook very very well done, or else you can get really sick. Now I've had it and it's 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 decent, but dude, fucking chicken, so fried, much better. Fried chicken, uh, exactly, dude. We I fried would be chicken. having, uh, dude. I'm headlining Mission Ballroom December seventh. If I killed that many chickens, everyone's getting some fried everyone's chicken. Everyone's getting some fried. Chi- oh, with, hey. it, with every ticket purchase, you're getting fried chicken. Korean fried chicken. Uh, every type. No, Korean, Korean fried, fried chicken. chicken. Is the best. I'll do Korean. I'll do fucking uh, Mandarin. I'll do damn. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I'll I'll do a damn uh, like a, a fucking uh, Mennonite. You know. <laughs> no fried chicken. Dude, what is Mennonite fried over. chicken? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the Amish will be frying chicken, dude. I'll have Amish there on deck, handing out and saying thank you in their language. If they have that uh, English, sure. Is there a good fried chicken out here? Um, I'm sure there is. That sounds like a no. Can I be honest with you? All the Korean fried chicken I've had has been fucking booty. Out here? Uh, it actually, it was out here the first time I had it, and it was fucking booty. Well, what was it, it was, Banchan? No, it was. It's right by a movie theater. It's it's fucking terrible. Damn. That's, so I that's need a I need shame. I need some better Korean fried yeah, chicken. Next time in Chicago, get some Korean fried chicken. Like we're, we're like we're just talking about all these like places that aren't Korea to get for Korean fried chicken. It's awesome. Not awesome. Why is it not awesome? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm t- I don't know. No, it's great because I remember back in the day when I was a kid, there wasn't a lot of like Asian food as much, other than Chinese food back in the day. Like, That's what like, honestly. Kids, but now, it, like even sushi back in the day was not. People were like, "Ew." Dude, one of my biggest qualms with Denver is the lack of Japanese food or lack of. Good Sorry, but uh, no, no, no. You're not. You're not wrong. But like, dude, even like in Mississippi, we had like fire, like hibachi places that we could go to all the yeah. time and just get fire food, bro. It's it's missing here. There's a lot of dank ass pho. Vietnamese. Yeah, yeah, yeah they dank got, ass. They do got pho and bubble tea shops out here <laughs> and ramen shops. I don't even know what bubble tea is. You don't? I, I know what it is. I just ain't had it. Never. It's just like Asian smoothies or like coffee tea. It's great. Okay, I should try. Yeah, it's good. I just ain't I mean, seen if it. If you like smoothies or like, like, coffee style right. drinks, white people love smoothies, and that's a workaholics reference. <laughs> if anybody great gets show. that, great show. Yeah, smoothies. That's what. So okay. white people love smoothies. No, the I think my favorite episode is when they're try. They need to get sober, but then they keep forgetting they need to get sober, and they keep accidentally hitting. The pot. Yeah. They're like, fuck. It reminds me of uh, Always like Sunny, where they're like, yeah. they're all getting sick and they think they're like, are all dying, but actually they're just having alcohol withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just, they just drink alcohol and then they're like, oh my god, I feel so yeah, much better. It's probably a similar feeling, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, man, this has been fucking so much fun. Yeah, it's, it's been a good time. I know I've asked you for a couple of years to come yeah. on the show, and you were always, you were like, I don't know, I'm kind of nervous, bro. You were fucking a natural. You were a natural today. I don't know what you're Cheers talking about. That. Cheers to that. You were awesome. I, I would say... Um, Come a little closer to the mic. Sorry. I would say um, I've definitely... Uh, let's say... Uh, how should I say this? I remember like just doing a lot of shows. I've, I've, I've definitely have been uh, slowing down on the shows and stuff and just kind of focusing on um, just personal things, like my own health to like mentality to because you know when you're on you're constantly just go 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 you 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 can end up losing that time to process things for yourself and also at the same time um twitter is a scary place and so it can i know it it can get in your head (laughs) so that's why that's why there was that nervousness but i've i've after taking time for myself and just kind of Growing, but also at the same time, like, why the fuck am I, like, I don't give a fuck. 
like at the at, at the end of it, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like I'm gonna do my thing. You're so cool. And obviously, I'm not gonna like, you know, I, I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna get me canceled. So at the end of the day, like if they do try to cancel <laughs> me for some bullshit, it's like, like because there have there has been moments, especially in Colorado, where you know there's always those afters, and everyone just kind of hops on the decks. There's been moments where I've been tagged for hopping on the decks. I don't know who else. I don't know, like, everyone that's on the decks on this back-to-back. And so, there's been times where it's like, oh, Miso went back-to-back with my abusive ex. I'm like, I have no idea who this is. And then they'll, yeah. they'll try to cancel me more. So it's like a lot of that shit was why I I, I try eventually try to avoid just, like, being seen. It's like, because... If I if you're it just came to a point where it's like oh if you're gonna be seen publicly someone's gonna fucking fuck you try to fuck you for no reason yeah and something that you're not even like like what <laughs> Damn. but yeah um, after kind of just taking time for myself finally it's been like when I started playing shows years ago it just kind of was just constantly happening and then throughout the just h- hype of it all and just just the excitement of it all i also got to experience you know just the twitter bullshit too here and there obviously i i never did anything like i never said anything or purposely did anything but you would still get caught in, tangled in to someone else's bullshit and it's like what <laughs> and then so yeah being seen Back in the day was like not my favorite thing. I like to, I'm also very growing up from like in just Chicago area too. A lot of people um, are closed off just generally to the public. So it's like, unless you somehow like connect with someone and become fam or bro, like it's, 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 I don't want to say it's fuck you, but it's also like, like, you don't it, trusting people because a lot of people are like uh, yes, there's genuine people out there, but also there's just people that are gonna like take advantage of you or something, or mm-hmm. just people who are waiting for you to slip up. Right, that too, and it's like so. Generally, me, I'm I'm not very. Of course, like if a fan comes up to me, I'm gonna try to respect them and like interact, but but it'll. It might be. I, I've been called out for being short or rude, and that was like I've, obviously I've never had those intentions, bro. You can but it's never. also just like a trust issue thing of like where, how I've grown up and and just also experiencing how the general public may perceive you, even though like that's not what how we want to like actually be perceived. Like that wasn't our goal. It's like you know, and it was never like our like motive or whatever it's just like you're either shy or tired or whatever the fuck you know <clears throat> and then some people may perceive that as like oh this guy sucks <laughs> and, then, listen, and then and then tell everyone about it listen dude you're pe- preaching the choir here buddy <laughs> all right if anybody understands this more <laughs> yeah it's me you yeah. know so you know what everybody's listening you hear him talking dude people are scared to be themselves because of y'all <laughs> Cut us some slack every now and then. I mean, I definitely have overcome it. I yeah, think, good for I you, man. I think I'm like, I don't know what it was. I mean, the last two years, I feel like for a lot of people too, especially like after COVID too, it's it's been tough for a lot of artists, especially like on a public aspect, especially when like people were like calling other artists out for like playing shows during COVID type mm-hmm. shit and like trying yeah. to get you canceled. And had we're going to start a blacklist. Then. Yeah. It hadn't stopped since then really. You yeah. Know? And it's, but I think after some time of like, of my own personal growth, like outside of like music and stuff, and then just taking time for myself and re- and just learning more about like who I am, you know, um, Cause honestly, I never really figured that out. Cause I started uh, playing shows like when a while ago, and I was a little schmuck. I'm not gonna lie, I was a schmuck. <laughs> I was just a young little schmuck, constantly getting in trouble, um, just kind of living life uh, on the fast, just fast lane. 
And, <clears throat> you know, I finally took some time uh, the past almost two years uh, just kind of trying to figure out who I am type shit. And then I feel like. I feel like I'm very close to fully knowing where I'm I'm there and it's it's definitely given me the confidence to just not be scared to like show that in the best way possible. Like I'm not saying I'm going to if I I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to be a schmuck on purpose or something even if I feel like being a schmuck, you know. We <laughs> like to be wild sometimes. We do. Right? But at the same time, again, I was like very close off. I would try to avoid interactions with fans a lot back in the day 100 percent um but yeah now it's like i'm definitely getting proud especially like back then i like like yeah i liked what i made too musically but at the same time it wasn't something that i like truly wanted to be making so there was also like that nervousness too and like you know as artists it's like it's a very like what we create and are like what we make is it's like an emotional thing for us too so it's like i wasn't fully confident in that aspect either but now you know just after growth it's like that confidence is like there i want people to know like like i'm finally me so like what it's supposed to be or getting there hell and yeah like, man and let's go and yeah. uh me so thankful you got there you know <laughs> <laughs> no yeah me too man no for real but like not nah, like all jokes aside like dude like i'm 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 fucking stoked that you got to that point i'm very happy you did man because like i said i've been wanting to have you on for a long time yeah i, mean, I know <laughs> no and I'm, I'm glad man yeah. this was fantastic i mean this is the longest you and i've sat down and just had like yeah. fucking wild conversations yeah. Play 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 Huh? Yeah, we play footsie. That was a good time. I mean, that's one of the things I love about this podcast is just like, you know, we have friends that we know on the road or through music, but we, how often do we get to sit down and talk like right. this, man? And I'm so thankful that you came in here today, yeah, man. Too, man. Like, uh, Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Dude, no, you are, you are very important to this scene. You know, you put on a lot of artists. You make a lot of fucking... Ink. Huh, make you <laughs> I'm gonna use that <laughs> no man but like what you do is super important like to this scene a lot of I mean people who don't even like understand it like they should and like and I don't want to say they should but like like what you do is important you put a lot of people on you fucking push a lot of great music you're always pushing boundaries you're fucking fucking Nominal DJ too, <laughs> you, dude. Fucking, they can't forget that. I mean, it's hard not to tell that. But man, I mean, through all the shit that you do throughout the industry, and I mean, and even just coming in here today, I just want to say thank you, buddy. Is there um, anything you want to tell the people before you get out of here? Ooh, I mean, I guess like expect expect something's coming because I've definitely been quiet, a little bit quiet than usual the past two years but you know it's it was all for a reason and i've just been training and growing and it's like it's almost all there to be released to the public and everything and i'm i'm, I'm like ready to come back like full force you know big dick swinging ah, <laughs> so and I, I i mean to say that in the most like i want everyone to experience like what I experience meaning like the reason why I do it, like the love of it and like, I guess also escape, but also like, man, I don't want to sound like, like drug relation, but like just the music and stuff. It's just, it makes you high and I want people to be high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want people to, be able to, yeah, sure, experience that high, but most importantly, um, kind of take you away in that moment where you're free from whatever bullshit or demons or traumas that you're facing and possibly maybe even, like, be able to, like, process somehow just from that high or escape or just, like, fantasy realm, you know, because... Mm -hmm. Life's hard. Life's hard for a lot of people. And, um, you know, not everyone has, like, this resource of being able to, like, the freedom of expression. You know, a lot of people live, you know, wake up, go to their work, and then come home stressed out. And, you know, 
it's like that's it so it's it's great to be able to you know share something where people can it's just like out there and people can like take that in and just even if it's just for like 20 minutes or just that one track or whatever or just that set it's like you know they're able to i want to be able to people to feel that and you know just just be happy you know if they're not happy in their lives and especially because like that's how i feel sometimes like you know i'm sure we can all agree there's a lot of bullshit in life that we all personally go through but and then we all have these moments of highs whether it's music or whatever you enjoy doing or just hanging out with the boys you know and it's like because if we didn't have any imagine if we didn't have any of those moments and you're just stuck in that loop of just bullshit like like a robot how how long can you how long can you like go on like that without those breaks or you know what i'm saying yeah all right let me think about it (laughs) probably like a good three weeks (laughs) What does that mean? Three yeah. weeks without drinking? No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> I could not make it that long. I, I'm telling you, I've tried. I could not. I couldn't. Make, I couldn't make one. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, man, I like that. I mean, <clears throat> music. I've always said is like the escape. It yeah. is a. It is like the most important escape. And in a weird way, it's like the best unifier. That, that you can too. think of, yeah. right? So, like, 100%. all different yeah. types of people from different cultures, oh, yeah. different sexualities, different political views, yeah. like, all these different things. All that's thrown out at the all door, the, yeah. and we're all together yeah. to escape all of that shit. It's all in that same moment together. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah, You're beautiful. beautiful. Oh, you too, man. And thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I love you. <laughs> love you, too. Thank you. I was glad I said it back. <laughs> Kyle, I love you. Love you, buddy. Brad, I love you. Thank you, Kyle. And I love everybody who listened to this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. See you all next week. Peace.